welcome to today's Pick a Card general reading. If this is the first time that you are seeing me, I am the Hermit Tarot and this is my free tarot reading channel here on YouTube. Just a quick reminder that I do do, I do do, <laughs> I do a lot here on YouTube. I also have a podcast called Spirit Talks. There'll be a new episode out very soon, but if you've missed the old one, now's your chance to go and have a look. I also offer some meditation videos. From memory, there's only one here on YouTube, and people always ask me to do more meditation videos, so I will do them, but I don't think a lot of people have seen the one that's already up, so I do encourage you to have a look at my channel and see what else I'm doing. Now, today's reading is very exciting. I'm filming this intro after I filmed all of your groups, so you can see how much energy I still have. It's been a pleasure, and I'm honestly, this reading wouldn't have been possible without the amazing support that the first part of this series received. All of the support that you guys gave part one of the Future Spouse reading really inspired me to actually recoup my energy, to rest enough to be able to do part two for you, and I was feeling energetic enough to be able to do an extended reading as well for this one. So listen, I'm very happy with the way that this is going and the way that each of the groups were filmed today so i hope that you get a lot of information and just a lot of positive vibes out of the groups as well so what can you expect for today's reading well it is part two of the future spouse series who is your future spouse part two is just as detailed as part one the groups are a minimum of 45 minutes each and there is going to be an extended reading for every single group I want to tell you more about what you can expect here on YouTube and then I'll tell you about what you can expect in your extended reading. So <laughs> I still have my list here <laughs> for part two here on YouTube. These are the main topics slash questions we'll be covering in each of the four groups. These will also be linked in the description box down below so you can refer to those if you want to follow along with me so you know what to expect. You can keep me accountable, but I promise you I do address every one of these in your group. So the firstly, we're going to be asking what will your relationship with your future spouse be like? And I do need to say that group four for part one your extended reading did already go into this a little bit, but I do hope to offer more confirmation for the other groups and maybe even for yourself in this reading. We will also be asking what your future spouse's physical features will look like. And I'm just going to show you this to, <laughs> to kind of help paint um, how that went because it was very intriguing. We got a lot of messages that I wasn't expecting and it was a lot of fun to do that one. We're also going to be asking what your future spouse's love language will be. We'll be asking how the two of you bond, what brings you together, what makes you kind of want to settle down with this person. And also, do they currently try to connect with you in their dreams? So very interesting um, topics and questions. It was a lot of fun to do. And for the extended reading, it will be an 18 plus themed reading. So I do just want to explain why I chose to do the 18 plus on ribbon because I mostly, I just felt, felt like you guys were going to have questions. So the main reason that I wanted to do it on ribbon was so that I wasn't censoring myself. YouTube does allow 18 plus slash mature content, but it has to be so heavily censored. And often what I was finding in the past is I would let one word slip, like I would say sex instead of S-E-X and then that whole video would be limited and demonetized. So just to save that from happening to a whole four hours worth of footage, I decided to put the 18 plus on ribbon so that I can just be myself and not censor myself. So this is the topics that we'll be covering for each of the four groups in the extended reading. What does your future spouse like about you, in particular your body, your physicality? What is the chemistry like between the two of you? What attracted them to you in the first place? And what will your first time with them be like as well? So it's extra juicy. Um, at the point that I am filming this, all I can say is that it, it will be at least 25 minutes. You'll be able to see that before you purchase your group. You'll be able to see how long your extended reading is for your group. Um, and I do hope to give you every bit of your money's worth as well. So the last thing that I need to explain, 
you're welcome to skip ahead if you don't need to know this, but <laughs> I did want to explain what the term future spouse means to me in the context of this reading. Sweet soul, you can't jump up here. Not while I'm filming. No, you're too, you're too scratchy and this dress is too fragile. Just sit down. The context of in which I use future spouse is that they're going to be someone who you spend a vast majority of your life with. They're not someone who's automatically binded to you through marriage, if that makes sense. They're just someone who you choose to spend a lot of your life with, um, which is why there are so many questions that we have for this person, you know, which is why there will be at least three parts to this series. Um, they don't necessarily have to be someone that you marry, but they are someone that you would consider to be your partner or your spouse. So I just wanted to clarify that definition. I should have done that in part one, but I didn't fully. So this is me trying to make up for that. <laughs> That's the last thing that I really need to say. So I'm going to take you into the pick a group portion of your reading now, and you can choose which of these four groups you're feeling most called to. Okay, so welcome to the pick a group portion of today's reading. We have four groups to choose from and before we get into the groups, I do need to give a massive shout out to the artist of these beautiful decks, of these beautiful cards, this deck. It is called the Vibrational Beings Oracle Deck and it was created by Sarah underscore L underscore B86 on Instagram. Sarah is very talented and <laughs> was a little bit hesitant to share her abilities with the public. So I'm so grateful that she now offers this deck on Make Playing Cards. If you find her on Instagram, you'll be able to find other products as well from her. I honestly am sharing her deck with you because I personally love it. I genuinely love her art. So if it's something that you also like, I do recommend that you check her out. So starting over here, we have group one. Curious is your card, and this is what your card looks like, group one. So we have some purple hues, some red, some lighter sort of pinky colors, and some black and white. Very beautiful imagery on this card. Group two, you guys have the Reconnect card, and this imagery is very angelic. It kind of gives me the seaweed vibe at the moment. It could be aloe vera as well, but I'm someone who needs to be around the ocean, so I think this is a personal reminder to get back to the ocean, but we've got this beautiful ethereal angelic creature um, stepping up this path, and it seems to be sort of in the sky as well. We've got some beautiful daisies in the background. Um, there could also be poppies, depending on what kind of poppies grow. And we have like almost like a body of water out here. You could really let your imagination run wild. A lot of colors on this card for group two. Over here, we have group three with the Wanderlust card. And group three, your card has this like fiery queen or princess who's like yielding a lot of passion and creativity over here. I don't know, I have an insane imagination. So take the imagery for what it means for you, but I'm seeing a lot of power in this card, a lot of fire, a lot of creation, a lot of passion, just a lot of energy. So very passionate card here with group three and a lot of strong, bold colors as well. Colors, it sounds like I said colors, <laughs> colors. Group four, you guys have the Yourself card, and this card, very similar to what I would say is the Reconnect card, in the sense that there's a lot of like different colors, and the main focal point seems to be, for me, this figure, as well as like the almost tentacles or petals that are growing out of her. And there's honestly a lot of interpretation on these cards, which is another reason why I like them, but Yourself in itself could be a very powerful word for you, group four. If you're feeling drawn to the imagery on this card, then this could be the card for you. I'm going to put group four's card back and let you look at them again. So just a reminder, group one, two, three, and four. You can pause the video if you need more time. Otherwise, you may wish to join me in the meditation portion of today's reading. You can jump ahead once you know which group you're feeling most called to. Scroll down to the description box, click your timestamps, and join me in your reading. So the first thing I want you to do with me is to take in two deep, mindful breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now I want you to focus on clearing your mind. It's natural to have thoughts racing at this point. 
I want you to embrace each thought as it comes and let it slip as quickly as it came in. Focus on clearing and balancing out these thoughts so that they come and go without a desire to be attached to them. And now, with the rest in mind, I want you to think of the first group that comes to your mind. It may be a number, it may be an object that I showed you, it could be a specific colour, it could be a feeling that you felt when I showed you each of the groups today. When you are ready, and when you feel confident, select your group and join me in your reading. Hi group one and welcome. Sorry, just readjusting my chair. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you guys chose the curious card from Sarah's beautiful deck, then this is going to be your reading. I've got a few people to shout out in today's video. So first shout out is to Sarah for her gorgeous deck. I would have already given her a shout out in the picker group, but welcome if you chose this gorgeous, gorgeous card, curious now, I feel a very interesting dynamic between you and your future spouse. I definitely think that there's going to be this kindred nature of igniting each other's curiosities. And I feel like maybe this is somebody who is very curious about you, which makes me think that there's something very different about the two of you. Maybe your upbringings um, could be different cultures, different views on the world that idea of like a logical person coming together with a very um, empathetic lover, dreamer sort of person. So it is very interesting. Let's see what the tarot cards have to say for us as well. Now I will come back to this card. I don't think it was a coincidence that you've gotten this for the first card out of the bat, but we do have a lot to cover in today's video. So I'm gonna get straight into it. And for that, I need space. So I'm gonna pop your card up here for now, out of view, but not out of reach. We wanna answer the first question. You can follow along with the questions in the description box if you'd like, so you know what's next, and you can maybe skip ahead if there's anything you don't wanna know. But we're covering a lot in this Future Spouse series. First question is, what will your relationship with them be like? Now, I don't think I want to use the tissue box messages for that, actually. We might use tarot. Tarot. Okay, spirit. Now, apologies if you had group four in the previous part um, in the series, because we talked about what their your relationship will be like in group four's extended. But I did want to offer this to everybody to help paint a picture of how you and your future spouse interact. So group two, please, spirit, what is their future? What is their relationship with their future spouse going to be like? We have the strength card coming out. Excellent. Leo's energy coming through strong. They're also saying the sun. You're my sunshine. Um, we also been showing the queen of swords in the reverse position. What is group two's relationship with their future spouse going to be like, spirit? <laughs> we have the knight of wands. How intriguing. Yeah, there's a lot of sexual energy between you and your future spouse for sure. Um, group two, excuse me, group one, part two. Yeah, there we go. The ace of wands. Interesting. Could I get, um, is it okay if I get clarifiers spirit just to get as much energy out here? Oh no, we won't. We won't. We're not, we're not going to because our next row is going to be asking about physical features. Okay. So interesting. First of all, your relationship with your future spouse will be one that ignites a lot of feelings <laughs> and when I talk about feelings I'm talking about sexual feelings group one your future spouse is going to be very physically attracted to you and it's because of your nature is what I'm hearing there's one physical feature that they do really like um, about your body but I can't get into that here that's going to be a part of the extended but I can tell you 
that this person will really like those standout things that a Leo possesses in terms of their hair, in terms of a Leo's um, kind of a sparkle. Leos do stand out. There's a stereotypical and main, many Leos disagree with this, but Leos do stand out. And I think that your person admires whatever quality that makes you stand out from the crowd that you live in, from the general population, whether you choose to do something different with your hair, whether you choose to wear different types of makeup or um, put a lot of effort into your dress or maybe you don't put any effort into your dress but you're very specific about where you buy clothes that you get dressed in um, it's just this feeling that your future spouse really admires your style because your style is a reflection of your nature and it feels like there's this way of expressing yourself that they're very 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 attracted to there's also this feeling of like the passion between you doesn't wane which i really love you can see here with the infinity symbol um your relationship is going to be very very passionate it will calm it's not just going to be volatilely passionate <laughs> but it's also just going to be very heated and um warm warm is what i can say um there'll be beautiful moments of bliss where you'll still be able to look over and be like wow i still feel like i'm this youthful energy full of love and lust for you even in this moment of us like doing the laundry or washing the dishes <laughs> or having to do another mundane daily task you know i also think that your relationship will be one with a lot of patience and trust there is a feeling here though with the queen of swords that you may get carried away with one another and may lose sight of other things other places other people you could be that couple that literally just disappears and forgets to keep in touch with other people um i also <laughs> Which isn't a bad thing, but it's something to look out for because I do think that certain people may have things to say about this. And listen, it's up to you what you choose to feed. You know, maybe you just don't want to feed um, other people's curious tendencies. There's that word again, curious tendencies. But I do think that um, you and your future spouse are going to be very en enraptured by each other's presence. Now, the other reason why the Queen of Swords is here, there's this thing in your relationship where one of you withholds some of the more harsher things. Um, one of you is very selective over what they say for fear of like saying the wrong things or saying something that is perceived to be harsher than it is. There could be someone who's outspoken and someone who's very conservative when it comes to speech because they usually don't like rocking the boat. And I do think that this is something that you both work through. It's going to be something you're very aware of about each other. It's not really a challenge. It's just the, what you, the nature of your relationship is like. There seems to be a dynamic of... Um, I'm hearing show never tell, but I know you so well. Yeah, someone's very withdrawn, but the other person's like, I know you, you're, you're stewing over it again, aren't you? You're overthinking again. I can see the wheels in your head turning. <laughs> Just tell me how you feel. Tell me what's on your mind. So there is this strong feeling of like, you don't need to, but I know you do hide some of the harsher truths that you want to say. So if that sounds like your personality, because it's something that's already prevalent in your nature, then that's going to be you. If it very much doesn't sound like you, then this is a heads up that your person is someone who um, potentially they over intellectualize and over analyze and just overthink in general. Their mind is very much a, a fortress of their own solitude. And they probably only say like, 5% of, of what they want to say to new people. And I think that even those who know them well, this person still has a side to them that they keep sheltered and hidden. Yeah, very um, selective is what I'm hearing, selective about communication and communicating truths of what's going on in their mind. Now, holy heck, you have a lot of fire in your spread. We'll move over to the Knight of Wands. In terms of what your relationship will be like, this could be the two of you taking lots of trips, lots of adventures. I see the Knight of Wands as more like day trips or domestic trips, but it could include international travel as well. I just think that you two are going to be looking at ways to keep the spark alive and to embrace each other's passions. So if you're somebody that, you know, prefers to be more at home or kind of stick to a comfort zone, but your person is somebody who likes to experience things and wants to, has always wanted to go and 
chase waterfalls. I don't know why that's coming into my mind, but I see that you're going to be accommodating each other's passions and trying to keep that spark in your relationship by doing these things. Lots of like day trips, adventures, like picnics, that kind of thing, where you go and look at um, sites in your local or domestic area. Um, I do think that there's this overall energy of just being like impulsive as well and like wanting to embrace your present moment together there's something very unexpected and encapsulating about this knight of wands energy it makes me think that you have a spontaneous flair to your relationship um maybe that's why you spend so much time by yourselves it's not that you plan to oh my god okay <laughs> that was a strong p apparently <laughs> and it's not that you plan to it's just that you do end up spending a lot of spontaneous time together like you finish work oh my gosh we have two hours together <gasps> that's amazing quick let's go down to the arcade and shoot some hoops that's what it sounds like you're just taking advantage of the little nuggets of time that you have together and it makes your relationship very exciting i see that it does keep the private moments between you though and some people may feel like they barely know your couple they might be like i know you or i know your person but who are you together because you seem to really treasure this time together um anyway over here with the ace of wands reverse no less i do see that your relationship together may be one of this is interesting i need to kind of clarify this real quick why is cancelled plans coming into my mind spirit how does that relate the star okay so your relationship could go through something here there's something that happens and it, it might just be a reflection of your ability to encourage each other and to support each other but maybe your relationship starts at a time where there's a lot of uncertainty or there's just a lot of unknown variables in terms of like am i going to have my job next week you know is the world still going to be in lockdown etc etc there's a lot of um feeling as though you can't really rely on, on certain things and you have to make the most out of what you have and you have to really push um, to stay optimistic. And I feel like your relationship is one that does constantly strive to reinvent and transform itself so that it doesn't stay fixated on what hasn't happened. Or, or what didn't go according to plan. It feels like there's false starts or canceled plans. And your relationship is one that really strives to reinvent the situation in order to offer a new ignition source. You know, okay, so we didn't get to go to Greece like we wanted to, but hey, let's just go, let's just go for a two hour road trip and see where the fuel tank takes us, you know? It's like, a, oh, I didn't get that promotion that I really wanted. So it looks like we're not gonna be able to get that mortgage for our dream house, but let's just go flat hunting. Let's go, let's go inspect a bunch of apartments and flats and see if there's any that we like, and maybe it'll be our dream home. You know, like there's this feeling of like making the best out of a situation of what's been handed to you. And I think that that's where the two of you become a really strong couple because you go through your challenges together that other people simply don't understand. And it does make you come closer together. We're going to talk about this later, but I do think that that's a major bonding moment in your relationship. Your relationship is constantly trying to reinvent itself, to stay hopeful, optimistic, to have faith that it will endure the tests of the outside world and the circumstances of the times that you're in. And I do think that there's this constant need to like strive for passion and excitement and experience in your relationship, whether it's sexual passion or physical experiences, you're just constantly wanting um, to keep the fun alive, to have the spark there in your connection. So let's have a look at physical features next. Let's see if we can get anything. Um, hmm. We might do physical features and love language together. Should we, Spirit? Yeah, we'll do physical features and love language together. You're my first group, so you're like my guinea pigs of <laughs> what's going to work best for this layout. Okay, Spirit, group one, what is their future spouse's physical features? And obviously take this with a grain of salt. Um, this is a general reading and I'm so, so happy and um, grateful that they these readings do very well but it does mean that with all those people we've got to be very careful about what we take and just um, pay attention obviously write it down if it's helpful but physical features is something that 
I can honestly tell you will be very general. It should just be very fun as well to <laughs> romanticize and imagine what this person might look like. Okay. Let me get some tissue box messages. Bottom deck energy is the energy is gaining momentum. Mm, waxy moon. We got a bit of a, um, what do they call it? A dark night. Is that what they call it? A dark, dark horse. A dark horse? I don't know. I'm using metaphors I never use. So. <laughs> Spirit, what is group one's future spouse's love language and physical features? Right, so straight off the cuff, I can tell you, let me just unwrap all of these. I can tell you that your future spouse is going to have a changing appearance, okay? There's someone who like, you know, you meet them when they have a beard, they shave it off, you're like, oh my God, you're a completely different person. And it's an opportunity to fall in love with them again and again and again is what I can tell you. This person is, I don't know if they're just experimental with their look, but their look does develop over time, especially with this energy is gaining momentum. Momentum. They're someone who matures in front of your eyes. They blossom. They glow up in front of your eyes in your relationship. It's very wholesome. It's very beautiful. They're going to have very strong physical features with Leo here. They could be their hair. When I think of Leos, I always think of their hair. But um, I think that overall, this person is just a very compassionate person. And they're going to be someone who you're very physically attracted to. Leos have this sort of um, magnetic energy about them. And I do think that your future future spouses yeah you're gonna like their hair I'm getting like a mane so either they have long hair or they have like golden auburn brownish hair is what I would say um really thick is what I want to tell you or they style it to make it look thick keep in mind their look changes so <laughs> in the time that you know them I am seeing that for some of you, you your future spouse may lose their hair but listen they're a spouse for a reason you spend a large portion of each other's life together aging is a natural process <laughs> okay so let us keep going I'm just going to unwrap these let's talk about these cards first so when it comes to their physical appearance, I see with Pisces over here, full moon and Pisces, no less. The time that I'm filming this is when we've just come out of the full moon and Pisces. So I can see here that the full moon and Pisces is saying your person's physical features will kind of reflect this sort of brooding, dark character. They may like to dress in darker clothes. They may be someone who really uses clothes to express their emotions, okay? So if your person is feeling meh, then they're just gonna wear like casual everyday clothes. And then you guys might go down to the shops together and this person would be like, all right, let's go in. And you turn to look at them and you realize your shorts have a massive hole in them. Like, how did you not notice that? And they're like, oh, just threw whatever was on. Let's get this out over and done with. <laughs> their clothes reflect their mood. So when this person is feeling really good about themselves, they dress really, really well. When this person can't be bothered because they feel like their arms been twisted into doing an errand, they're going to dress like their arms been twisted into doing an errand. <laughs> they dress to reflect their mood. And I do think that this person may be drawn to very dark dark colors in general. I'm kind of getting with Pisces here that there is something about this person's physical appearance that stands out. They may have something to, in their eyes. Their eyes look very wise and mature, but I find personally that Pisces people have like twinkles in their eyes. Even though they're the oldest sign in the zodiac, I think that I believe they have really like sort of dark eyes with twinkles in them personally. Even if they have blue eyes, green eyes, there's this darkness to their eyes and this little twinkle in their eye as well. Um, it's hard to describe, I hope that makes sense. We also have full moon in Scorpio, so <laughs> wow. Um, physically speaking, you're gonna be very attracted to this person's physical, um, how do I word this? Let's say genitals, okay? I'm sorry, I'm just gonna get straight to the point. Um, I see that this person is, is uh, yeah, you're gonna be very, regardless of gender, you know, I'm just telling you, you're gonna be very satisfied. Um, <laughs> I also can say with Scorpio that there's something about these per this person's lips that you're going to love either they're a really good kisser 
or they just the way that they talk you like the way that their mouth moves it's so interesting i've had somebody say that to me and that's what spirit's showing me is that feeling that it gave me so it's very interesting you guys have just a beautiful passionate chemistry between one another and you do admire a lot about each other but it's this person's mouth that seems to kind of be a standout feature for you we also have aquarius i was getting this sort of off the cuff feeling about them this individual kind of energy about them kind of walks to the beat of their own drum feeling a little bit of a um, rebel uh, not so much though I do think with new moon in Aquarius that this person you're going to meet them when they've recently transformed their physical appearance so you're going to see old photos of them and go what you didn't you, don't, you look like a completely different person what the heck and they'll be like yeah <laughs> you met me at a good time but they constantly do that and you're going to realize that in your relationship when you meet this person they are going to be fresh in terms of they're going to have a fresh appearance newly colored hair styled hair um new newly wear worn clothing it feels like they're just somebody who is on the precipice of starting something very new when you meet them so it feels like they're like they're very proud of who they are when you meet them um, and it's because they feel that they're the best version of themselves when you meet them. I'm also getting this feeling with Aquarius that they have this thing with their limbs that you're going to love. It's the way that their limbs wrap around you. It doesn't even mean that they have to have long arms and legs. But as a physical feature, you like the way that they wrap around you when you're holding each other. And it's going to be something that you feel in those early dating stages, like you hug each other to leave. The way this person wraps around you, it's just going to hit different. You're going to be like, wow, there's something special about this person. I just want to be consumed by them. <laughs> Literally with Scorpio here. Um, we also have your commitment is being tested first quarter moon. So when it comes to their physical appearance, I see that this is something Someone who does have two sides to them and they're, they're, the way they dress themselves is like we were saying before dependent on their mood but I think with this card there may be two very specific sides to them so they could be one of those people that basically live in their work uniform and when they're not in their work uniform they wear the same outfits you know they have like a go-to look outside of their work stage um, either it's like go-to makeup or go-to sort of dressing style go-to clothing go-to hair style there's just this feeling of like night and day with this person when it comes to the way that they look you you either see them at work or you see them at home you're like oh okay you're going to work oh you had a day off today like it's very obvious <laughs> based on how they dress now in terms of their love language with leo here this person is a fierce lover they have a beautiful compassionate loving side to them that is very attached to you okay and they have a lot of patience for you their love language in terms of um, oh gosh, the five love languages. This person loves to exchange gifts. They love words of affirmation. They do like physical touch, but not all the time. It has to be within the realm of appropriateness. This is somebody who will appreciate um, strong eye contact more than like a, a, a sneaky like squeeze or pinch out in public, you know, but they like words of affirmation. They like um, exchanging gifts and just to be kind of seen. They want you to appreciate them, whether it's little or, or big, like they appreciate just being seen and in the relationship. I do think with remembering here that they have a very strong sentimental streak, okay? And this person is going to really appreciate sentimental gestures of support. With Sagittarius here, they're kind of that person that just wants to make um, memories with you, experiences. They love traveling. They're going to want to travel with you, okay? Experience the world with you is what I'm hearing. It is always on my mind. So yeah, behind closed doors, they are very much somebody who endures, endures okay they might like going for a long time as well um they enjoy physical touch and intimacy but it has to be within the realm of appropriateness so behind closed doors intimacy is very important to this person and it's not just being held although i don't i wouldn't be surprised if when you're at home you just sort of hold each other um but it's it's more like yes sex in general is within this person's um like it's something that they really value in a relationship is what I could tell you. Root chakra is interesting. Root chakra tells me that this person just, again, they want to be seen in a relationship. So they may have had an instance in the past 
where somebody just kind of played them or made them feel like they weren't important. Um, and so it's very important to them that they know where they stand with their partner, which is why this could be an issue. If one of you internalizes, the other person could start to feel very insecure. Um, not too much though, like you guys talk about it, you know that about each other. Yeah, we have the seventh house. So there is a side to this person that is just honestly made for partnering, partnering and long-term relationships. There's someone who values long-term relationships. So with your marriage, I get that this person is going to want to honor, like, um, what's the word? Like, I just talked about this with one of my friends who had one recently, anniversaries. <laughs> There's someone who's going to want to honor those milestones. Like they have this sort of side to them that's not so much traditional, but by the book. And they try to meet those partnership requirements and obligations. They see it as like a contract. Like, okay, it's time to celebrate our anniversary. It's time to celebrate the day we met. It's Valentine's Day. And I don't know if you're always able to make a big deal out of every single one of those dates. You know, like life gets in the way, but they do try to, to make all of that happen for you. Um, yeah, this person is very charming. They're cheeky too with the seventh house. They're good with their words. I have a strong feeling that this person is just very much a charmer, like words of affirmation, 100%. That's how they tell you. They will tell you they love you. They may not like do all those like PDA, like, you know, public displays of affection things that other couples do, but this person will tell you they love you. They'll, they'll show you, they'll introduce you to other people as your partner. Like they'll make it known through their words that, you mean so much to them in public, if that makes sense. Like, it's not that they aren't here, like, trying to showcase it. It's just that they're not comfortable doing those things in public. But they will tell it to you, to people that you meet, you know. They're very much um, verbal, not physical, when it comes to public displays of affection. We have tea. I'm just going to get all of these out and see if something comes to my mind because these aren't necessarily supposed to be initials of your person. You can take them that way if you want. But my intention was to get further clarity on their physical appearance. So honestly, with T, I heard tongue and my mind is filthy. I also heard titties. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, it's my music. It's what I listen to. It's terrible. But yes, a physical feature. We're looking at this and we're looking at the tongue, which we already know. It's something about your mouth, your mouth, this person's mouth that you really, really like. We also have K. Oh, I just heard, um, why did you say it like that? I heard knee, but it came out like knee. <laughs> Like they pronounce the K, kidney. Am I missing something? Kidneys. You can't be attracted to somebody's kidneys. That's impossible. I'm just going to say knee. I don't know. Maybe there's a kidney incident. I don't want to say that though. Kidneys. <laughs> Knees. Knees is a bit strange anyway. <laughs> we also have I'm grateful for my options. Interesting. So yeah, you're definitely going to be attracted to a lot about them. And I think that with this person's love language, like there's a lot to love. They're a lover. They're a lover with Leo coming out. They're a romantic person who enjoys like getting a response, a reaction out of you. Um, there's somebody who's just going to be here teasing you at home. And then like in terms of like, oh gosh, how do I word the teasing? Just very cheeky is what I can tell you. Very cheeky. The kind who would like give you a pinch here and there, um, say something, stare at you. Yeah, you can't be uncomfortable with this person. They they adore making you uncomfortable. So your best bet is to be confident and make them work hard to make you uncomfortable because <laughs> they will take that challenge. It's something that you guys have that keeps the spark in your relationship. We also have over here, I wish, so interesting. This tells me that when it comes to their love language, this person is someone who may internalize certain things. Um, I almost think that I wish is like this deepening of your connection it's what the star was talking about over here your relationship does transform and reinvent itself and i do think that certain parts of each other gets explored later or through the challenges that you experience so it's almost like say something happens somebody loses their job okay well we have to re budget our financial situation and maybe look at um like 
restructuring our lifestyle and then it's going to come out like your person will be like i just miss you and you're like what do you mean <laughs> we've spent all week together you don't have a job anymore and they'll be like no but i miss you like we haven't been spending time together it's almost like with this person's love language there's a side that doesn't necessarily come out as verbal as they are it feels like it takes for these big things to make this person actually tell you what they need more of um, which is so bizarre and I don't think it's something that they're fully aware of it's something that you bring them into awareness of like you show them like how am I supposed to know this if you don't tell me I thought you were happy I thought this was what you were happy with I didn't realize that you wanted more of these dates I didn't realize that you wanted more of these like sentimental picnics in the park like I didn't realize you wanted more um, time doing this. Like, I've been so busy trying to help you. So it's very interesting. A bit of a serious note, but I feel like that's a very realistic note as well. And in terms of these other letters, I really don't know. We've got two Zs here, which is so bizarre. That's not a body of the feature that I could think of. All I'm thinking of te is, is Tanzania and Zanzibar, which is what Z always makes me think of. Um, oh, now I'm hearing zebra. Okay. This person is attracted to your stretch marks. I know that sounds bizarre, but especially if you have children with this person or you're very open about your body issues in terms of like weight loss and, and trying to stay healthy in general and overcome your self image. It feels like this person looks at your body in a very appreciative way of how it has fostered your change as an individual and within your relationship. They have this side to them that's very appreciative. Zebra, zebra stripes, interesting. We also have another T, so two T's, I'm telling you sweets, it's titties. It is, you can't change my mind. <laughs> we also have G here, so gorgeous. Oh, shut your mouth, there's such a obviously, um, Oh, yuck. I just heard gaping and I can't get it out of my head now. Please leave. Oh, yeah, this person is a freak. Um, it's that kind of gaping, you guys. We also have, I'm sorry, the 18 plus reading was not supposed to be in this part of the reading, but these messages just come sometimes. <laughs> No, I just can't stop saying things that have to do with that. Anyway, we also have an H coming out as well. So I heard... Um, hair obviously hair has come out before but there was also something else spirit what was that other h word higher 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 what is the higher somebody could be taller than the other person no yeah somebody is taller than the other person somebody is taller than the other person and they like how the other person looks when they look up to the, i think swear this is sexual again i swear this is like somebody being on top and looking up to the other person why are we going down the sexual road how do we get out of this we also have the letter f so honestly it could be a foot fetish i'm just going to be real with you but i'm also hearing fancy dress so it comes back to clothing style yeah you are attracted to this person because of the way that they i mean i don't want to say that the way that they dress because listen i'm seeing somebody who just doesn't care <laughs> they're just out here like you're gonna make me go to the supermarket on my day off to do a food shopping bill for the family when nobody can bring a plate of their own food to thanksgiving I, we don't even have thanksgiving in australia so i don't know why that holiday but it just feels like um <laughs> There's something about this person's way of expressing themselves and clothing is one of them that keeps coming back to the what you admire about them. You really find that attractive. Um, goodness me. In terms of a love language, we also have W or an M, but I'm going to see it as a W and we have a B. So yeah, I do, I do think, just to keep it simple, coming back to those feelings of um, sentimental moments and like taking advantage of the opportunities that you have because b is coming out as body for me so i feel like this person really prides intimate moments with you um and really prides is that a word well they really appreciate intimate moments with you and for the w here it just feels like this person sees your relationship as being successful when you are having moments to connect physically i really do think that they're a physical person group one 100 percent 
They like exchanging gifts. They like connecting um, in sentimental moments, sentimental gestures. Um, they like words of affirmation. Behind closed doors, they are a very physical person. Um, but more often than not, you're going to hear them praise you. They're going to be someone who tells you how they feel about you and, and tries to um, really communicate their feelings to you, especially in public. Yeah. Okay, let me push these out here because when I shuffle, they go all over the place. So I'm trying to learn from my past mistakes. We've got to move forward. We're going on to how do you bond with this person? How do, how do the two of you bond? Well, there's that B too. The B was staying there. All right. I feel like the initials just kind of came in and threw, them, <laughs> threw me off balance. So I've got to get back on balance here. It really made me read between the lines. Um, how do you bond with your future spouse? Oh, yeah. You have the death card. So Scorpio is very strong here. How does group one bond with their future spouse? We have the queen of wands reversed. How does group one bond with their future spouse? We have the queen of pentacles reversed. We have, oh, what's going on? Yeah, you're definitely that crew. Can I get one more card spirit? How do they bond? We have the Eight of Wands reversed. Interesting. This is so bizarre. Because it kind of feels familiar. <laughs> it's so strange to um, explain. But bottom deck energy is the sun. So Leo and Scorpio is very strong in your reading. I'm just going to get a quick drink of water. Oh, we've been talking for a while. Well, I have... You guys, listen, you bond, it's exactly what I was saying before with the Ace of Wands, you bond through hardship and it doesn't feel like these are challenges that you've encountered because of each other's personalities. It's literally like the world is, I'm hearing the world is burning. Um, you're going through challenges in life, like little, little things that you, or huge things that you can't control. And that is what helps the two of you strengthen your relationship. You kind of go through a lot of emotional change with one another. And I do think that the way that you interact in each other's love language encourages you to emotionally mature and really become connected to yourself to the point where you're able to articulate openly with your partner like what's going on especially because your person is someone who really values communication and intimacy so if they feel you pulling away they do take it personally and they want to know like what's going on what can I do to help so I do see that you bond through some pretty big shifts in your life that really make you feel insecure. For these two queens to come out reverse, honestly, for all these cards to come out reverse, it feels like there's an insecurity around work, there's an insecurity around money, there's an insecurity about financial independence, there's an insecurity around um, attractiveness and how my body's changing and I'm very insecure about losing all of my hair or something like that. You, you feel like you bond through your insecurities or through the insecurities of your material world because you solidify that your attraction to one another is deeper than that. Through these um, tests of, of your 3D world, you kind of validate that this relationship is beyond that. We're deeper than that. We're more, we're more than that. We're more than our hair. <laughs> we're more than our money. Our love is greater than our need to look a certain way and to, to present a certain way. And I really think that this is a massive turning point for you especially and just for your partner to be able to show you like how much they do love you and vice versa because i think that this person i think that they go through it as well they're not exactly where they want to be at certain points in their life they go through it as well a change of job that leads to unstable sort of beginnings um i wish it was a lot smoother i wish i could have made this transition easier i'm sorry that it was so difficult it just feels like you really bond through those challenges. Your relationship is proven to be more than those material attachments. And we see that again over here with you are a badass being full of life, love and possibilities. This is my badass being card. And for it to be reversed, you bond when you feel like really low about yourself. It's like you, you, you are each other's vibration raises. You are each other's source of like inspiration and honestly happiness as well. You put a lot of waiting on validation from the other person because it feels like 
you are someone who takes pride in your appearance or you are someone who is kind of feeling like, you know, I just had my first child and this isn't going to fit all of you, but this is just an example. I just had my first child, put on weight, my body's changed, my belly looks so different, my arms look different, my leg looks different, my face looks different, my hair feels different, so much of myself has changed, how could you possibly love me still? And this person's going to be like, are you joking? I love your zebra stripes. <laughs> I love the fact that they represent you carrying our child into this world. That kind of beautiful sort of feeling is just like, whatever the challenge is, it's, I'm glad you've told me, first of all, I'm glad that you finally told me why you've been pulling away and not letting me look at you the way that I, you used to, not letting me shower with you the way that we used to, but I can tell you honestly that all of this change has only made me more attracted to you, more committed to you, more desiring of you. I'm more in awe of you than before. I see so much more, um, what's the word, like sunshine. There's just this real warmth in your connection. And I don't, I can't lie to you, there's going to be tears because this is really deep rooted sort of fears and insecurities resurfacing. But the way that your person handles those insecurities is just very, very a one. <laughs> it's very commendable. We also have the eight of wands over here, which is reverse. So I think that you definitely bond when things don't go well, when things don't go according to plan, when things feel like they're all up in the air, when you don't really know what tomorrow brings, you're able to have this ability to kind of stay present with one another and to like, yes, we're stressed. Yes, we don't know where we're going to be tomorrow or we don't know, um, you know, and this isn't something that happens all the time, but it feels like whenever things don't go according to plan or when you feel like you don't know what tomorrow brings, this person and you, your relationship is very grounding and it's something that brings the two of you closer together because you talk about your fears, you connect with one another and you're able to kind of work through those fears and insecurities together. So that's what I'm seeing here for that question. Next, we're going to look at, do they connect with you in your dreams? This feels like a bit of a tangent, but, and it's a little but, I just think it's a very interesting question. So I thought, let's throw it in, like the um, cherry on top of the ice cream sundae. Does group one's future spouse connect with them in their dreams? Does group one's future spouse connect with them? in their dreams we have the gallery of those who came before interesting i want to say yes but not that much we have gifts from the past oh my days i haven't seen this card yet it's gorgeous does group one's future spouse connect with them in their dreams we have your light coming out in the reverse position Wow. Does group one's person connect with them in their dream spirit? We have laughing and crying coming out. The number 45. You know what? This is someone who has a dreamer side to them. They could have a lot of water and air. Um, someone here is very fiery. Someone here is very airy and watery. But listen, you could both have a bit of air in your charts, to be fair. Anyway, your person is someone who does like to dream. They do like to dream about you, daydream, wonder what you're like. Imagine what the two of you will be like together. Imagine how you will be able to help each other. They imagine consoling you already. This person imagines having a partner that is compassionate and open-hearted and, you know, from time to time insecure, but overall a very emotionally resilient person and they imagine being able to support a partner who is like that they kind of want someone who isn't afraid to be open and emotionally vulnerable enough to be able to be honest about what they're going through so they do imagine like looking after a partner who's going through it because i'm sure that this person's been through similar things or just has that connection with other people in their life maybe like a family member like a mother or a sister or a brother or a father they imagine themselves really 
being emotionally open and able to both laugh and cry with their future spouse. They dream about that, especially when they're going through dark periods in their life. They like to daydream and wonder what their future is going to be like with the person of their dreams. They imagine the warmth, the chemistry, the connection, the cuddles. They imagine just being able to show their person off to people and to have somebody that they're proud of. Um, and that they're proud to be with as well. They do imagine having like a really in-depth connection. And I do think that you may have a past life with your future spouse. But this is somebody who imagines someone who is like the cherry on top of everything that they've experienced. Because I do think that your person has had some challenges in their life or just some things in their life that they wish were a lot easier than they ended up being. And they see you, their future spouse, as a reward for all of that. So they kind of feel like, if I can just make it through the day, if I can just make it through this opportunity, if I can just make it through where I'm at right now, if I can just, 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 then maybe I can be um, rewarded with this beautiful person that I daydream about. And I want to say that they do dream about you, but it's not as regularly as they wish they could. They can't control it. The gallery of those who came before is more of a confirmation that they see you as a reward for every hardship or previous relationship that they endured and left behind. They see you as someone that is the reward. So it's more of like wishful thinking and daydreaming. I think that they do connect with you. They imagine you so much that your energy feels so strongly to them in some ways. Um, but I don't think that this person has had many like detailed lucid dreams of the two of you together. It's more like wishful thinking and daydreaming. Bottom deck energy is the hold. Look at that. They just imagine that, that imagery wrapping their arms around you. There's something about the way that this person wraps their arms around you. They imagine just holding you and consoling you and telling you that everything's going to be all right. This person gets a lot of comfort and gratification off doing that for people that they love and they imagine doing that for you. So that's what I see for you, group one. Thank you so much for being my guinea pig and, and looking at how these questions all work out and fit together. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to take this into the extended now. So if you skip the intro, the extended reading will be an 18 plus reading. And the main reason that I'm doing that is because YouTube is very, very, very strict on what they monetize when it comes to 18 plus wording. In fact, I did say the S-E-X word in your reading, and I wouldn't be surprised if this video gets demonetized because of that. So I'm not really able to get away with saying a lot of the things that I want to say on YouTube while still being able to <laughs> run a business. So I made it a 18 plus reading that's available on Ribbon as an extended reading. We'll be looking at what your person likes about you and your body. We'll be looking at the chemistry. We'll be looking at your first time with them. And we'll be looking at what attracts them to you physically as well. So it may only be like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, um, but it should be juicy, <laughs> you should say the least. So if you're interested in that reading, you can find the link down below. But I just need to take a quick second to thank your guides, my guides, and our spiritual teams for helping me channel today's messages and for keeping me safe while doing so. I also need to thank you, Group One, for supporting me here on YouTube and for joining me, exchanging energy with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I shall see you in another video. Bye. Hi, Group Two, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Here is the card that you chose. We have Reconnect over here. This gorgeous quad with these beautiful angel wings and this beautiful, beautiful um, green leaf. To me, it looks like seaweed. And the only reason I think that's the case is because I definitely have not been to the beach as much as I usually do. So it's telling me to go <laughs> reconnect with my salt water veins. Interesting. Welcome group two. So we have a lot to cover in today's reading. I am going to put your card out of sight, but not out of mind, just so that we have room for everything that we're about to get into. You can follow along with me in the description box will be all of the topics slash questions we'll be asking spirit about your future spouse. A lot of information to cover. I'm actually really excited though. I was excited to meet you in part one and now I'm excited to meet you in part two. What is going on with 
group two. Who are you? Oh, why am I like this? Anyway, let's keep going. We're going to start with our beautiful traditional right away for the first question. What will your relationship be like? So group two, if you were a part of group four in the last part of this series, then I do need to apologize because we answered this question in your extended reading. But it is a question that I did want to give everybody the opportunity to experience. So I did include it in this part too, because I think that it's something that a lot of us imagine and wonder about as well. So what will your relationship with your future spouse be like? Spirit, can you please tune me into group two's energy? What will their relationship Ooh, we have the Five of Swords. You feel familiar, group two. I have this inkling suspicion that I know some of you guys personally. But anyway, group two, what is their future spouse? What is their relationship with their future spouse going to be like? Do you want that to come out? No, yes, no. Just listen, if it's meant to come out, it'll come out. Group two, what is their relationship with their future spouse going to be like? We have the Page of Swords. Okay, interesting. In a bed, we have the star cord. <laughs> Why am I talking like this? And we also have the queen of swords. Excuse me, this is all air energy. We have Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Mostly Gemini and Aquarius, if I'm honest with you. Not so much Libra, um, but it, with all these swords, Libra could be here. Your bottom deck energy is the hermit reverse. So, wow, Uranus and Mercury are here strong. So... In terms of what your relationship will be like, I can see that communication may be an issue in the beginning, and it's going to be something that the two of you will come to deeply appreciate as your relationship develops. You're going to realize that you need to be communicative, you need to be open, you need to be honest with one another, and you need to constantly check in um, and and remind each other that we're, we've moved beyond that issue and I think it's only an issue because maybe you're a group that struggles to solidify your union maybe you're a group that's like you know we love each other or we have strong feelings for each other but we have not been able to ask each other out on a date your relationship may struggle to ground in the first place because of communication issues so I do see that throughout your relationship communication is going to be very important to you now in terms of what your relationship will be like, I can see that with the two of you here, for the Five of Swords to be here, <laughs> there's something about a quick change. There's something about taking action or saying something that, that causes quick change. So I do think that your relationship may move very quickly in the beginning after you choose to be with each other. Something that you say or do could cause your relationship to move very, very quickly. And I do think that this kind of puts a, a rift between who you were versus who you're becoming. So by that standard, it could cause a rift between pre-existing relationships who didn't realize that, you know, you were going to grow up and, and quickly move into this person's house and be a big part of their life. Maybe some people might be a little bit like, oh gosh, we're losing our baby girl. Um, by people, I mean it's family or like friends, people who had a lot of your time previously. Um, because your relationship moves quickly, they kind of feel like they lose that with you. So that's a side note. It's not really your main focus. I just see that there's going to be a quick change in the beginning of your relationship that causes things to move fast. And this could be highlighting, you know, we didn't talk to each other for the longest time about how we feel. As soon as we did, we realized that we didn't want to spend any more time away from each other. We decided that we wanted to make it work and we wanted to try to move this relationship in the right direction. And what we, by doing that, we decided to move in together. <laughs> so it's, it sounds weird, but it seems to fit for the two of you. It seems to be something that you can both agree is the best choice for your relationship. Now, over here with the Page of Swords, it feels like your relationship is one of curiosity and kind of development, to say the least. It feels like you're constantly trying to like figure out how to how to i'm seeing bridge the the gap and the differences so i wouldn't be surprised if your relationship is long distance initially or if there is distance initially because it feels like you have to like keep tabs on one another through like electronic communication um 
Yeah, it's so interesting. So that's only going to apply to some of you. The other reason why the Page of Swords is here is because there's this youthful curiosity that this Page of Swords brings that kind of, I've, I've talked about this in my Q&A <laughs> this week, but it's kind of in a haphazard vessel that's like prone to make mistakes. And yet it's constantly striving to learn more through its observant tendencies. So your relationship seems to be one where you're constantly learning about each other, about yourself. And you do that mostly through what you see, not through what you want to say. It's like you're both like, <laughs> okay, so we're living together now. Um, how do I tell them that I don't know how to cook rice? <laughs> how do I tell them that I'm actually allergic to eggs and they just eat eggs all the time? <laughs> you're just thinking about it. And it's like you're both wanting to impress each other or to really kind of be more mature than you actually are. You both want to be more developed than you actually are. So it does feel like there's a lot of growth in your connection while also just having this sort of curiosity about each other's like life and, and who you are. This curiosity could be even more so peaked because you look up to your person or you, you there's something about each other's sort of situation that is very different like maybe your person runs their own business or they work in a really specific field and it's very much something that you're curious about or you're intrigued by and you kind of feel like you're this fly on the wall to this kind of like hectic operation of events and you, you just get to observe them in a way where your mind is like wow <laughs> and I mean it could be vice by, by versa but there's this interesting energy here of almost being like um too small for your boots and pretending like they fit anyway <laughs> so it's very interesting i think that the two of you are going to have very interesting conversations to say the least i think that you're going to be able to have some really good conversations with this person where you talk about all kinds of things and you're going to broaden each other's minds in very weird ways. You both do it in a way where you pretend to be completely knowledgeable about the topics, um, but you kind of realize as you're talking to this person that you don't know as much as their curiosity is is begging. So like you might be like, hey, did you hear that all the bees in the world are, are dying and it's a serious cause? This person will be like, oh my God, that's terrible. Have you considered environmental factors? Why not? Why don't we go plant based? And you're like, what? <laughs> I love meat, and I can't imagine flying all the way to Africa to save the bees. And it just feels like there's something about the way that the two of you think, where you do challenge each other to think outside the box and to kind of like, oh, yeah, actually, I got a bit too big. I got a bit too big for my boots. I'm actually a small, <laughs> and my boots are large. Let me just get the right size. <laughs> It's interesting. It's interesting. You keep each other on your toes. Um, over here with the star, the relationship it seems to be very healing, to say the least. It also seems to be nostalgic. There's something about this relationship that feels very nostalgic. And I want to say that this person has some sort of Okay, now don't freak out, but they do have some sort of connection to your past in a way that is helpful and healing, okay? Not in a way that is triggering and painful. It is helpful and healing. This person's connection to your past helps you consolidate some of those feelings in a way where you feel more present and more able to embrace your future. This person's presence in your life helps you look at who you were and focus more on who you're becoming because you don't feel Feel attached to the pain that was your history or your background or your experiences in the past you're more kind of seeing this relationship as a fresh beginning for you to be able to heal and move forward I also think that this in this um, relationship just inspires you you inspire each other and it gives you a lot of hope and um, faith in what is to come there's an optimism here with the star card that seems to come from your ability to see beyond your past and focus more on your future by creating it with this person like you feel very much like um, grounded in your present and using your present to build your past with this person whereas I think before them you were kind of looking at your past and going you know what this is what I don't want to be again so I'm going to mold my reality based on my past and what I don't want to happen Whereas this person comes in and is like, let's face this way instead. Look at who you can be. Look at what hasn't been touched yet. And they don't say this to you, but their presence in your life makes you see that. 
feels like a change in perspective of how you see your future. Very wholesome feeling. We also have the Queen of Swords here. So your relationship with this person is definitely going to be one where there's a lot of interesting words and opinions being exchanged. And I think that this person is able to put things into perspective for you. They're able to kind of give you a bird's eye view of, of your life and make you see things from a different angle. This person is very interesting. They, they kind of put a different opinion into your mind and you're not exactly comfortable with it. You feel a bit like, oh, I don't know about that. Like, <laughs> I'm a strong, fierce, vegan activist. You know, I'm just using very extreme examples. This isn't going to apply to everybody. But this person may come and be like, yeah, but like X, X, Y, Z, a bunch of facts, spit and knowledge, no cap. And you're like, oh, my days, you're right. I um, don't know if I want to admit it, but I can see your point of view. <laughs> so it's very interesting, group two. You have this ability in your relationship to constantly kind of develop as individuals based on how you explain things to one another, based on how what you're interested in and how you talk about what you're interested in and how you share your interests with each other and your opinions. I do think that you both have very strong opinions about the world, about certain things it could be like linked to environment it could be linked to social justice it doesn't have to be linked to any form of equality but you have these opinions that through your relationship do get challenged broadened and changed to a point where you feel very comfortable <laughs> with each other like you guys might be very if people come in and, and they haven't seen you in a while and they like have a conversation with you guys, it could look like you're arguing and bickering, but you're actually just like having this um, incredible conversation about a fairly, fairly controversial topic while respecting each other's individual opinions and challenging the other person's stance. It's like a debate. It's like a very well um, debate and you both have love and respect for each other. So it doesn't seem to go too far. But to the outside person, it's just like, okay, this is clearly something that they do. And I mean, we all know couples like that. Well, at least I can think of a couple like that, how they're very opinionated. And from the outside, it's like, oh my gosh, are they about to brawl? But it's like, they always end with like a laugh and a smile. And it's like, okay, if that's what you're going to think, then that's what you're going to think. I'll get you next time. So that's what it feels like. You're very intellectual, both of you. Um, and with the Hermit reversed, I do think that your relationship is one that seems to kind of involve like your your um, conscious awareness and how you choose to see things and believe things and communicate about things. There seems to be this ability in your relationship to gain wisdom from each other and to steer each other closer to each other, if that makes sense. Like this person will show you parts of yourself that you hadn't thought about or explored and they will show you parts of, um, you will show them parts of their self that they haven't really wanted to explore or think about. They might've never thought that they would be plant-based and all of a sudden you have the meeting lentils every day they're like what oh my gosh it's crazy in a good way so now we're going to move forward we're going to look at physical features and love language now take physical features with a grain of salt i do my best obviously and i always do but um I'm very happy that these readings are very successful, but it does mean that for physical features, I mean, I'm trying to be as specific as I can, but just take what resonates, write it all down if that's helpful. And then in hindsight, look at how, oh yeah, that, that clearly wasn't <laughs> what was supposed to be. So I will do my best to get as much specific information as possible. Physical features, we have full moon in Sagittarius. Look at the bigger picture. We have a time for healing balsamic moon what are group two's future spouses physical features spirit what are their physical features group two their future spouses physical features we also have a win-win outcome is forecast full moon in libra libra comes in one way or another because this is a relationship reading but you guys do have a lot of air signs so I'm not surprised. Um, physical features of group two's future spouse, please, spirit. 
We have prosperity lies ahead, new moon and Taurus. So Venusian energy coming through with Libra and Taurus. Interesting. We also have blue moon, believe in the impossible, your bottom deck energy. Yeah, this person may may um, be very different to your usual type, okay? <laughs> they may be very physically different to your usual type. I'm getting this feeling that um, you're, you're obviously attracted to each other, but there's something about them that is like, I would never be attracted to X, Y, Z. And then XYZ walks in with a whole lot of class and style and you're like, oh my gosh. And then they open their mouth and you're like, oh my gosh, you have blown me away, XYZ. So keep an open mind is what I want to tell you. The other reason why Blue Moon is here is that it could be the complete opposite group too. It could be that this person ticks every single one of your boxes to the point where you never thought it was possible. There's no way, Prince Charming Princess of Azkaban, I don't know, I went a little bit crazy there, but the dream person of, of my reality would actually exist. There's no way. And then they walk in one day and you're like, oh gosh, that's them. What do I do? What do I say? Why are my hands sweaty? Why are my legs sweaty? What's going on? I can't walk. I can't breathe. <gasps> oh my God, they've seen me. They're coming over. That's what it feels like. You kind of, this is either somebody who you never really imagined yourself being with. And it could be because they tick all of your boxes. You're very physically attracted to them or their type of people, um, which makes me think that there's a physical feature, especially that you really like about them that you thought you couldn't have. And for some of you, I'm seeing a big booty. For some of you, not for all of you. We also have, look at the, <laughs> that's why, look at the bigger picture. Now, full moon in Sagittarius. Sagittarius always makes me think of, um, I don't know, with Sagittarius, people I always think of their chests and I just think of like their shoulders I don't know maybe it's the archer you know the archer they always have to put their chest out and be like Pow. so it just makes me think that you're going to be very physically attracted to this person's chest and shoulders does it mean they have a strong broad chest uh, they're strong it just means that you like what their chest has to offer you so for some of you it's it's this for others of you it's just the way that your hand moves over their chest and their back mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then what else can I tell you about Sagittarius? Yeah, there's something about them that's really big and you like it. <laughs> oh no, don't do that. Now they're showing me an arrow, so take it as it resonates. <laughs> I don't want to get too into it. i got to be careful on YouTube. YouTube's guidelines have gotten 10 times stricter in the last three months, which is why I haven't been able to do an 18 plus reading on here. Um, so I can't say certain words, otherwise this whole three hour video gets thrown into the bin in terms of monetization. So I have to be very careful, but listen, you get the bigger picture here. Bigger arrow is all I'm going to say. A big, <laughs> bigger arrow. We also have a time for healing, balsamic moon. So a physical feature with this, honestly, healing keeps coming back. I'm getting touch. I'm getting tenderness. I'm getting this like intimate moment where you are able to kind of hold each other. It feels like their face or the way that they hold your, there might be one of these people, you know, like you're just sitting there like chilling and they come over and they're just like with their thumb like this, just kind of like caressing you with their thumb, making you feel calm and, and healed. They have a healing touch is what spirit's saying. I also just think they have a calming presence to them. So it's not so much a physical feature, but they have a calming presence to them. I think that there's something about their touch, whether it's that they like to hold your hand or they like to hold, like they put their hand on you somewhere. It does feel to be your arm somewhere. Like it's either here or it's like your shoulder. And their thumb likes to do that, like, just to let you know, like, it's okay, it's okay. Especially if you experience anxiety. I think this person's very kind and patient and just very healing with their presence when it comes to your anxiousness. Um, oh, what else can you tell us? There's something else going on here with their smile. Healing smile. No, it's not that they have a healing smile. They have a crooked grin. <laughs> they have this cheeky thing that they do where only one side of their mouth comes up. It's so interesting. I just saw it with the moon. They have a cheeky thing that they do where like, and I don't know. No, they know that they do it. They do. And they know that you like it. They'll do it especially to kind of make you melt for them, to make you weak for them. Oh, but it's going to be something that you notice about them immediately when they smile at you because they do come at you with a lot of charm, by the way, when you first meet. 
they're going to pull out all the stops with sort of charming you and wooing you the first time that they approach you. We also have Libra, speaking of charming, Librans are very, very charming. A win-win outcome is forecast. This tells me that when it comes to their features, there's something about this person that comes across as very balanced and proportionate. Their body could be very well proportioned, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like things are kind of symmetrical. Um, <laughs> I don't want to talk about like good body shapes, but I am seeing an hourglass for some of you. I'm just kind of getting that they're like uh, straight up and down proportionate as well for, for most of you. Like there's something about this person that feels balanced and proportionate. I also think that this person likes to, um, it might be like a neurotypical thing. They like to um, kind of make sure that their appearance is balanced. So they'll be one of those people that either coordinates colors or they coordinate hemlines or like I'm wearing brown shoes and my, my jeans have to be straight. And I don't know, it's not exactly um, to the point of like OCD, obsessive compulsiveness, but it does feel like they have this desire to, when it comes to their appearance to be sort of balanced. It's interesting. That's all I can really say about that without getting too specific. And I don't want to do that because I'll eliminate a lot of other people. But what else can you tell us about this full moon and Libra spirit about their appearance, group two's future spouse, their appearance, they're showing me their eyes, their eyebrow. There's something interesting about this person's eyebrow. It's either the arch is really high or for some of you, there's indication of a scar there. There's indication of either a previous piercing or a scar on their eyebrow. It could also just be like a birthmark or a birth, um, what do you call it, like a mole? We call them beauty spots in my family. But um, yeah, there's something to do with their eyebrows. They're either high angled and there's a scar that goes through them or some sort of unique mark on their eyebrow. Um, anything else here, Spirit? Nose, what's going on with their nose? They're showing me someone with like a broad nose, if that makes sense. I don't know how to describe noses. I've never had to describe a nose, but it kind of comes down. Oh, I could probably draw it. It kind of comes, this is so bizarre. It's obviously not going to apply to all of you. It kind of like comes down and is like that. That's how I could best describe it. Yeah, I don't know how you would call that. What do you call a nose like that? Oh, I can't even show you. It's not even a frame. What do you call a nose like that? Is that a broad nose? I don't know. That's the nose that I'm seeing. Like, literally, that's the nose that I'm seeing. Anyway, that's very specific. So I don't know if we're going to keep going with that. Let's go to their love language now. Oh, excuse me. Taurus, how dare I? Prosperity lies ahead with the new moon in Taurus. Interesting. It's a physical feature, very Venusian. I do think that they like their body. They express themselves. I don't think they're too tied to clothing, if that makes sense. Not to say that they're a nudist. Um, <laughs> but I think it's more about their physique that they admire. So that doesn't mean that they have to be completely in shape. I, in fact, if they're a feminine character... Um, which is not their gender, by the way, it's their energy. I do think that this person has curves to them that they actually really admire about their physical body. Oh, I'm seeing a little belly that's kind of like, oh, it's cute though. It makes me just want to rub it. Oh, why? Yeah, I feel so touchy-feely with this energy. Um, they admire their body though. And I do think that this person, when it comes to this Taurus energy, they really take pride in their body and their appearance. And I don't know if they've always been that way. I think that they just have this appreciation for themselves, this love for themselves that they really strive to maintain. And it's more of like a point of view than anything. But I do want to say with Taurus here that for some of you, this person could have a routine with their health that they use to maintain their physique. So whatever their physique is, they seem to like to maintain it. Now, the other reason that Taurus could be here is that this person is very, very, very sensual in general. So when it comes to their physical features, I want to say that there's something very intriguing about all of the senses, touch, taste, smell, appearance, or look. There's something that this person seems to do to kind of draw attraction to them in the way that they admire about others. So it could be a specific color, for example. Um, it could be a specific smell. It could be a specific um, 
sound, if they like jewelry that moves and makes sounds, you know, something about what this person admires in other people. Like if they're attracted to people who wear perfume or cologne, they themselves will wear perfume or cologne to try to like, and they'll comment about it on other people. They'll be like, oh, I love your smell. You smell so good. If they like um, other people's like, if they like the color red, for example, they'll wear red and they'll always point out, hey, we're wearing the same color. That's my favorite color. You look so good in red. Um, it's that kind of thing with Taurus. Taurus is a very sensual sign and they're very connected to their senses. So it feels like this person likes to physically do that and embody that in some way. It's very specific and particular though. And that's a clear sign as to what, how you could kind of reach their senses as well. <laughs> Find out what they like and, and wear it on yourself. Now let's go to love language. What is group two's future spouse's love language, please, Spirit? Okay, now if I get initials, I'm just going to put them back because I kept them for group one and they just took us on a ride that was not fun. So <laughs> it just had us more confused than anything. So I'm going to put initials back because this isn't the time and place for them, but um, we will keep these. So love language, stop it. We have Virgo again. Virgo had manifested itself previously with the Hermit card. So listen, Mercury is strong. Earthy, mutable energy is strong. Virgo over here is saying that when it comes to this person's love language, they are someone who may be more about words of affirmation, okay? They may struggle with physical... Um, no, I don't think so. Listen, I think that this person may be behind the behind closed doors, a straight up like freak. Like they'll be out here with food, with, with <laughs> fluffy things, with cold things, with warm things, um, with... <laughs> textured things with like silicone things they like they like the way things feel they like knowing how things work and knowing how things make you feel so i do think that virgo brings a little bit of a freaky energy to this person's love angel and what's the word i'm trying to say love language um but i do think that they like words of affirmation i also am getting like this very like touchy feely thing but it's quite specific so it's not that this person is like a public uh, a slays of what is it displays of affection but they do like to um, do certain things or rituals not even rituals like little routines in the bedroom little little things of discovery in the bedroom <laughs> like you'd be like oh it's a fluffy handcuffs kind of night okay <laughs> you know like there's little things that like little quirks and and things that this person enjoys um when it comes to your relationship and languages though for virgo to be out here it also makes me think that this person just appreciates quality time with you um, they're going to really appreciate spending quality time with you, getting to know you, having these conversations, talking, connecting, understanding each other. They're going to really appreciate quality time. The other thing that I could think of is like that translating into little adventures as well, where the two of you just take time out together. You don't have to always leave the house to do that because it's more about quality time. But I do think that they are going to appreciate time away with you as well in your own little world together. We have the 10th house coming out as well. So this tells me that this person's love language is about <laughs> gifts as well, okay? The 10th house does not hesitate. The 10th house is a straight up flex. A lot of earth energy coming through in this portion of your reading. We had earthy and air, so it could be an earth air cusp sign. We're looking at Taurus, Gemini, Virgo, Libra, Capricorn, Aquarius, potentially, potentially. Now, 10th house is very much about buying. So this is somebody who would like to buy you expensive gifts to show you their affection that way. They would be the kind to be like, yeah, you know, it was just a $500 Gucci belt. Like, no worries, I got you. <laughs> I'm just showing you how much I care about you. I really, I saw you looking at in the mirror um, and you wanted more pearls. So I went down and I bought you that pearl necklace. Oh my days. Why does it always come back to sex? Anyway, I do think that this person in general is really just going to pay attention to what you like and they will buy what you like for you. They may also just like the way these things feel for them. So they buy it for you as well. <laughs> But yeah, I do see them liking you to exchange gifts as well and showing love through purchases. 
We have Jupiter, 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 Jupiter. This is Sagittarius and Pisces. So more of that Sagittarius energy coming through. Jupiter tells me that this person does like adventures. They like experiences. So they're going to want to experience things with you. They're going to want to try things with you. It doesn't have to be new things. In fact, they may be someone who likes to create new memories with you to help get rid of old memories. They could like be like, you know what? Last time I was here, I was actually here with somebody who broke my heart. So we're going to change this space because we can't avoid it and we're going to make it our new <laughs> our new um happy fun zone area i don't know if that's something that you're going to be comfortable with and i don't know if they'll be completely transparent with you about the impact of these places but listen they they mostly just want to create experiences with you there's someone who strives for um thrill and and fun and pleasure in that sense i also see pisces having more of like an undercurrent energy so i think that this person when it comes to the way that they express themselves they may present as really light-hearted like that this kind of carefree sagittarius energy of yeah you know you know, I just I just saw it in the window and thought it looked good on you but underneath there's this deep rooted feeling of like I put a lot of effort into this I paid attention to how many times your head would turn and look at that window and stare specifically at that watch and I've been like wanting to get this for you for a long time so I hope you really like it there's this undercurrent of seriousness to the way that they show love to you and yet on the surface it prevents it presents as very carefree and like in the moment we also have Venus I knew it all this Venetian Venusian energy of Libra and Taurus coming out so Venus for me is just this strong feeling of affection sensuality expression um, focus on yourself, your senses, basically. So that comes back to what we were saying before about this physical appearance. Their love language is a reflection of their um, affinity for the sensuality, um, for the sensual things in life. So things that touch, the things that feel good, things that taste good, things that smell good, things that sound good, things that look good to this person. They're going to want to kind of lavish you in that. They want you to, um, they want to see you in that is what I would say. And listen, this isn't somebody who's just gonna like fully like, I need you to do this and you're not allowed to have your own opinion. Because remember, that's what they like about you. You challenge them, you tell them like, hey, no, that's actually, that's not right. <laughs> it's not okay to think like that. Like, let me change your mind real quick. And they'll be like, wow, <laughs> okay. So it's obviously things that you also enjoy doing. Like the idea here is for pleasure, not for manipulation and control. Um, it feels like they just want to give you things that you enjoy and things that feel good for them as well. So I honestly feel that for some of you, this could go completely left into like straight up, like experimenting with a bunch of different sexual um, scenes and toys and <laughs> role play like it could go straight the other way you know what I mean like maybe the two of you create something between you where you're like you have a completely different life that you lead behind closed doors <laughs> like it could go that way it could go into like not even just role playing but like you might have this fascination for like I'm thinking of a very specific couple in my life pop figures and so you just <laughs> this way that this person um, shows love for you is they just feed into your obsessions and they buy you all these pop figures or they buy you all these crystals or they buy you all these like comic books or buy you all these anime subscriptions I don't know whatever it is they just seem to be very um, specific is what I would tell you and very sentimental and well thought out we also have karmic partner so yeah this is giving me Gemini more than anything with June here, but karmic partner tells me that there is a feeling of like challenging and needing to kind of like expand each other's minds. So when it comes to this person's love language, they actually just uh, love spending time with you, talking to you, getting to know your mind and vice versa. They have a lot of opinions that I feel you respect and are curious about and honestly vice versa. They're curious about you and your mind and respect your way of thinking as well. And I feel like you're constantly challenging each other's thoughts. So this person just loves talking to you. It keeps coming back to communication with you group two this person just really adores talking with you and having that opportunity to kind of see things in through your eyes we also have october i wish i told you this is libra energy again um this is also just telling me that this person holds like a lot um of weight to communication in your relationship this is telling me that this person may spend a lot of time 
wanting to tell you how they feel and like once they actually work up the courage they try to go all in here for the for the main objective which is partnership i feel like this person is really going to value communication in your relationship and honest communication they want you to to be able to face difficult conversations head on and there's someone that's always going to come to you with difficult um, decisions to like figure out where your stance is it's not that they can't make a decision but they want to know what your opinion is like for example i just got offered a new job it's 20,000 extra a year but it means that i'd have to work two hours on the weekends both days it may mean that every other week I get my Mondays off with you, but it does mean that my duties are increased and I may be like a little bit more stressed for the next six months while I get used to the role. What do you think? And this person's heart could already be set on taking that job, but they want to know like what you think about that. They're not just going to do it without consulting you and understanding how this is going to impact you first. So we also have February. I'm grateful for my love. So this tells me that, yeah, they have so much love for you. They have so much respect for you. They're so deeply attached to you from the beginning, which makes me think that you take a long time to come together. This person's love language is just tailored to you, group two. While their communication is honestly something that they keep highlighting, there's this very special, soft, unique, sensual side to them that is completely tailored around what makes you feel good about yourself and how they can continue to make you feel good about yourself. It's very much about you here and showing commitment to you and really like bringing sort of <laughs> new exciting energies for you with that Sagittarius Jupiter energy. Look at this. How many times are we going to get confirmation of communication? We have Gemini coming out now. Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. Gemini is also talking about um, siblings, community affairs, um, in terms of like the third degree being connected in that way. So it does feel like with this person, I don't know, they might have a kinkier side to them and they've also got their traditional side. So on one side, when it comes to their love language, it could be very simple and easy to read. Like this just bought me a, a beautiful bouquet of flowers and I love that for us. But on the other side, it could be like, okay, the fluffy handcuffs are on the bed headboard. Oh my gosh, it's going to be that kind of night. You know, <laughs> they seem to have a um, changeable side to them that shouldn't be underestimated when it comes to how they show affection for you. And it doesn't come out all the time because life gets the better of us. But when it does, you seem very excited by it and very, um, I'm hearing enthralled, encapsulated, because it is all about bringing pleasure to you, they're saying to you my days. We have Cancer here as well, Cardinal Energies. We've got a bit of Capricorn and Cancer for the Cardinal Energies, Libra as well for Cardinal. So there is Cardinal Energy here. I do think with Cancer, um, yes, yeah, Spirit, technically February, no, it doesn't. That's Pisces and Aquarius. Anyway, Cancer over here, this is just telling me that there's this all this love at the bottom of their love language and they try to be adaptive with how they show you love to suit you know, to make sure that they're not miss, they're not missing, miss, what's the word, misrepresenting their love for you. So I do see that this person comes on strong um, and they're very much like once they're ready to be in a relationship with you, they're very ready to be in a relationship with you. They want the whole thing. They want to move in. They want to live together. They want people to know you're together, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to have to move forward now because I talk too much. We're going to look at, I'm going to push these out of the way because I just, it'll happen anyway when I shuffle. We're going to look at how the two of you bond. How do you come together? How does group two bond with their future spouse? Oh, we have the king of swords reverse, finally talking about something that's been looming over your heads. How does, I mean, I'm not surprised, communication. How does group two bond with their future spouse? The Queen of Wands reversed, an insecure moment. Wow. How does group two bond with their future spouse? Taking action towards your feelings despite your fear. Interesting. This is like a story, a heroic story of overcoming fear, of telling somebody what you actually love about them. Group two. How does group two bond with their future spouse spirit? The King of Wands, wow. Ambitions realized, plans taken. 
How does group two bond with their future spouse? The Knight of Wands reversed. I heard stop dilly-dallying. Bottom deck energy is justice. Yeah, you bond through your union, your partnership, coming together and realizing what you want with each other. It feels like you're in each other's area for a while before you come together, which is so bizarre. The best way that I could describe it is that you're kind of aware of each other, but you haven't told each other each other's truths yet. The truth is I'm actually really interested in you. I've been thinking about you a lot. I've been keeping tabs on you. I've been watching you. I've been keeping up with you. Um, I'm actually very insecure around you because I'm very attracted to you and I'm unsure if, if you're attracted to me too and I haven't shown you that yet but um, the feelings are mutual okay well let's take action towards this I'm gonna have the courage to actually tell you how I feel I'm gonna have the courage to move this forward and to go in and tell you the truth and I'm going to plan for our future. I feel ambitious about our future. I'm going to tell you what my plans are. I'm going to show you what my plans are. I'm going to take assertive action towards you. And I'm going to make this more official because I feel your energy pulling away. I feel my lack of communication leading to energetic stagnation. I feel your energy invested elsewhere. I feel you growing cold on me. You wanting to explore other options and look elsewhere. The feminine energy in your connection withdraws and the masculine is like oh my days what have I done I have pushed the person that I want away from me and I'm only realizing at a time where they feel so cold I don't know if they even want me anymore but I'm going to go for it anyway and also another way that the two of you bond is through a very unique specific interest or hobby this person likes similar things to you and you're both going to like want to know that about each other. So you may surprise this person. You may think like this person would never do um, RPG gaming with me. And then all of a sudden this person's like on there with you in the same server. And you're like, wait a minute, what? There's something very bizarre about how you actually like once you disclose feelings, take action. The masculine seems to be very ambitious and wanting to like make this happen before the spark wanes and this person the feminine's energy gets thwarted into alternate avenues towards alternate suitors once that happens there is this moment of getting to know each other and realizing that your differences actually make you very similar you have unique hobbies or interests that are very similar but there are also a myriad of physical and um, practical differences that make you very similar which is why you two this is very much about reconnecting and getting to know each other properly you don't seem to do that the first time you meet you seem to <laughs> you seem to not really connect that way and that's why you're so curious about the other person that's why the page of swords is what your relationship will be like because the way that you bond is by getting to know each other's differences understanding each other's differences and realizing you have some very unique interests one of them could be music with the knight of wands it just makes me think like hobbies like maybe you both like to keep fish or you like specific types of food or or plants or I don't know there's a way of expression here artistic in a similar way um but it feels like in order to get there, this masculine realizes, oh my days, like my lack of communication has caused this queen to look elsewhere and their energy is investing into alternate paths and they're pulling away, they're getting cold, I don't know what I've done. It's time to act, it's time to pull this out. It's time to pull my finger out of my ass is what I heard. Okay, so that's how you guys bond. I do have to speed this up a little bit. We're going to go to, do they connect with you in their dreams? Does... Group two's future spouse connect with them in their dream spirit. Does group two's future spouse connect with them in their dreams? We have everything will be okay. They do, they do, they do, they do. Oh, this is such a maternal person. And I'm talking about energy. There's something about this person that's so calming. They just have this way of like bringing so much warmth so much cozy warmth it's like that nice coziness of like being a child and being held by your parents and it's like they're there it's okay and i don't mean to insinuate mother issues here but, <laughs> but um this person definitely connects with you in your dreams as a way of comforting you we have can't be caught and it's because you're in physical separation for many of you uh -huh. can't be caught. We also have dependency reversed. 
Yeah, there's a lot of cardinal mutable energy here. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's like issues with settling down and, and wanting to give up your independence, not wanting to be, um, I'm hearing enslaved. Okay, somebody has very strong views of relationships. <laughs> um, do they connect with group two in their dreams, their future spouse? Do they connect with group two? Why enslaved? That's so dramatic. We have fire mother. Yeah, this person is the source of your inspiration. If you know who this person is, they're someone who inspires you to be the person that you want to be. They connect with you in your dreams to remind you that everything will be okay. They're very spiritually connected to you already with Sagittarius Jupiter here. Very spiritually connected to you. The main reason they connect with you is because you're in separation. And they will continue to do that anytime you're separated. You have a very strong energetic connection to this future spouse. They are very much someone who has reincarnated to be with you in this lifetime. And their energy, once you meet them, is very strongly attached to you. I do get this fierceness towards independence and individuality, though. Wanting to have something for yourself and not wanting to settle down. Whether that's something that is mostly embodied on one side. But honestly, it feels like both of you share that. So there is kind of this feeling of when you come together into a relationship, you got to do it right. And you have to talk about what you both want. Um, which you're not going to struggle with. Communication is <laughs> very important to both of you. But you are each other's source of inspiration. This person connects with you to inspire you to take opportunities in the right direction for you and to help you get to where you need to be to kind of come together with them. You guys are supposed to be very independent, autonomous people who kind of have your own things going who are kind of striving towards your own goals and ambitions. And it kind of helps the two of you feel secure in your relationship with one another. Because if one of you isn't doing well, you immediately feel insecure about the other person's success. And it's not that you don't want them to be successful, but you start to look at yourself and go, oh, I wish I could be as good as them. And this is making me feel terrible because I don't want to feel guilty. I don't want to feel bad, but I am now feeling guilty because I do feel bad. So it's very interesting. This person's almost like a spirit guide for you that's still alive. Um, so yes, it's not just dreaming, you're energetically connected to this person, especially when you're in separation. And it's mostly because you were meant to come into union in this lifetime, you reincarnated together for that specific purpose. Um, when you meet this person, it feels like you're under a spell by them. It's like you can't break that spell. So for many of you, you push this person away because of the intensity of that attraction, but it does come full circle. So... That's what I see for you at group two. I apologize for the fact that I had to speed up the last two questions. Unfortunately, we did run out of time. I am going to take this into the extended reading now. The extended reading is going to be fairly juicy. A lot of 18 plus questions. The main reason that I'm doing the 18 plus reading on ribbon in our extended is because of YouTube's very strict guidelines now. I can get away with 18 plus readings, but I, they're not as fun as they can be <laughs> if I do them elsewhere. I can use language that I can't use on YouTube in these readings. So that is what is going to be happening in the extended. We're going to be looking at what does this person like about you physically in terms of your body, in terms of their attraction to you? What are they, what attracted them to you in the first place? What is your first time with them going to be like? And what is the chemistry between the two of you going to be like? So the link to the extended readings is down below. I need to, well, thank you so much. If you're going to join me there, it'll be up now. You can see me straight away. Before we go, though, I do need to take a quick second to thank your guides, my guides, and our spiritual teams for helping me channel today's messages and for keeping me safe while doing so. I also need to thank you, Group 2, for all of your support here on YouTube. I really appreciate all the energy exchanging. Thank you so much for being here. Give this video a like if you enjoyed your reading, and be sure to subscribe to make sure that you're notified for Part 3. I shall see you in another video. Bye! Hi group three and welcome. If you chose this beautiful card, Wonderlust, then this is going to be your reading, your future spouse part two reading no less. Thank you so much for all of your support on part one. It is honestly what gave me the strength to be able to take more days off to be able to deliver this second in-depth reading straight away. I thought, oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. I really want to keep this momentum going. So Wanderlust is a beautiful card of momentum, speaking of. It is this feeling of like following something and, and being kind of un 
uh, how's the word like inexplainably drawn towards something if that makes sense that's at least that's my interpretation of the energy of this card it may not be the webster dictionary <laughs> definition but it certainly feels like this undeniable yet unexplainable attraction so beautiful beautiful energy coming in i will put your card out of view um, but not out of mind. We're going to keep it over here just to have more room to address all of the questions that I have for you today. Now, link, um, to, not even link, there's no link, <laughs> but the a list of the questions will be in the description box if you want to follow along with me. We're starting with the first question. What will your relationship with your future spouse be like? Now, I do need to apologize if you're in group four for part one, because group four, you already know this question in your extended reading. We answered this question mostly because your your group was just like, I need answers. I can't, <laughs> I can't leave this reading like this. So um, we did address this question in group four's part one extended reading, but I did want to offer this to everybody. So we're going to get into it for you, group three. What is your relationship with your future spouse going to be like? What is group three's relationship with their future spouse like? We have the 10 of Pentacles in the reverse. Why did I have a, all of a sudden a Russian accent? A really bad one at that. Group three, what is their relationship with their future spouse going to be like? We have the five of Pentacles reversed. Interesting. Group three, what will their relationship with their future spouse be like? Excuse me, can you get out of here? This fly. We have the Seven of Wands in the reverse. Intriguing, intriguing. Group three. What will we have? The Two of Cups. Stop it. Bottom deck energy for you is the sun. I just want to sit in your energy. It's actually quite beautiful. It's very, very, very beautiful to say the least. That is me saying the least. It's so, 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 so beautiful. Oh, how can I use other words? <laughs> oh my God. I almost feel like I need to pause the video because I'm just being too selfish right now. And that's what your relationship feels like. There is such a beautiful energy between the two of you. That's very warm. Listen, the warmth came through in all the groups. I won't lie to you, but in your group, it feels like that beautiful sort of soulmate energy where you just kind of want to touch each other. You want to be close to each other. You want to just kind of feel each other. You want to look into each other's eyes. You want to have those moments where you just kiss each other. You don't even care who's around. And I think that that's something very special that you may not have had with other people or your spouse has not had with other people. There's this feeling of like you don't really care who's around you. <laughs> <laughs> which is a little bit selfish um but listen it's so beautiful people who know love will look at this and go i don't even care i don't even care that they're locking tongues and lips in the middle of a busy street it's actually just so much love coming from these two that's what it feels like you're very public with your affection now your relationship also Seems to have something a little bit unconventional about it here with the Ten of Pentacles reversed. Either there's like a molding of blended families here, like you have kids from another relationship that are coming in, or there's like a molding of tradition here. You have to kind of unconventionally come together, different cultures, different religions, different, um, I'm not too sure, households. But there's something very blended about your union. Your relationship involves you doing something that was once traditional and turning it into like this unconventional version of your life. Like it doesn't fit what was expected of us, but it still falls in line with what we value. And for that reason, it feels very new. It feels like something that people before you didn't have. So it could be unconventional in the sense of like gender norms even, you know, and being able to embrace who you are as a person and who you're sexually attracted to as a person. And that's something that people before you may not have had. It could be something like that. It just feels like you're there's something about this that doesn't fit a specific mold and you're making it work still. And it works well. Like I'm forgetting this harmony, this blended energy about it. So it actually feels like that is supposed to be reversed for you because you're not following the legacy of those before you. You're doing what is best for you and maybe rewriting that book on legacy and creating your own version of that. I also do think that there could be blended families here for most of you, though, like children from previous relationships. Is there anything else with the Ten of Pentacles spirit reversed? Money changes. 
Obligations to money changes. Your relationship is interesting. I don't know if it's because you try to create a business with this person, um, but Spirit's saying your, your obligation to money changes because of this relationship, which is so interesting and diplomatically worded. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> um, interesting. Your relationship to money changes. It could be that like maybe to inherit something, you had to do something, you had to marry someone, you had to take on a specific profession, you had to follow a specific legacy. And you're like, you know what? I don't want your money. I'm just gonna do this instead. Very specific message, but it had to be said. We also have the five of pentacles here. So this is kind of telling me that honestly, with that card being reversed, your relationship is all about warmth. It's all about making each other feel safe and connected and, um, unaffected by whatever's going on around you. However crazy it is out there, this house is warm. This house is filled with love. This house is filled with connection. Your relationship is about dealing with issues and not allowing those bigger issues to infiltrate your connection. It feels like um, your relationship may externally go through changes. Like this is making me think that maybe somebody's like dealing with something to do with family or job, money in general, but you try not to let that impinge on your successful relationship with this person, vice versa. Very much just wanting um, warmth with one another and to spend a lot of time together. I get this feeling that the two of you are going to be very connected, almost obsessed with each other. So I do feel like you're going to want to spend a lot of time together. You're going to want to be that kind of couple that's like cozied up together in bed, um, spending that quality time. I also think group three, that this person just like really is protective of you or you're protective of each other, almost like you're in each other's back pockets, like just really looking after each other, wanting to check in. You're that couple that likes to text each other all day. You know, you're happy to be separated, but you're just going to make sure you're safe. So I'm going to text you and make sure that you get there safely, that you're there safely and that you get home safely. And it's not in like a possessive way. Um, you both just know that that's what gives you both peace of mind for each other. Like you seem to both want that and like that about each other. Like I feel safe in this relationship. It's very important that you do that. You feel safe in the relationship. We also have the seven of wands reverse. So this is interesting. The seven of wands reverse is this fear of coming, this feeling of coming over, overcoming <laughs> my days, <laughs> this feeling of overcoming fear um, and potentially insecurity. It feels like um, this could even be jealousy in some of your cases. Um, I think that you are very attracted to one another and you're not exactly oblivious to the fact that other people are attracted to one another. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised if this um, role plays out as, you know, I'm going to look after you. You're, you're my main piece. You're my main squeeze. I can't let other people squeeze you. <laughs> There is also just this feeling that your relationship is something that is safe. Like, I keeps coming back to that. It's like you go through changes and challenges and, you know, there's drama in the family again. And this friend is threatening to do this to that friend. And the ex is fighting with Z again. And Y is in the middle of it. But we're okay. We're, we're solid. <laughs> we're, we've got nothing to worry about. We're not a part of that. Um, we're not going to let that affect us and change us and turn our good, warm connection into something filled with jealousy and spite and anger. And it feels like your relationship is very soothing because of that. It's something that Honestly, um, other people may be jealous about because you're not afraid to show that. Like you're out here happily together, <laughs> thriving. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if other people get a little bit jealous. And I don't like to feed into jealousy. So we're going to keep moving forward. Let's have a look at the Two of Cups next. The Two of Cups is this beautiful connection of compromise, of friendship no less, seeing eye to eye, feeling connected at the heart. Even if your minds have different opinions, you've agreed to disagree. We agree that we're individuals and we're coming together stronger because of that belief. Now, I do think that this means that the two of you are very um, compassionate towards each other's own interests. And you really try to make sure that the other person has room to kind of or feels 
safe in their own way, like in the sense of like, yeah, if you want to go to the markets on Sunday, like that's fine. I can do this instead or I can go with you or maybe we could do this at this time instead. You're very good at compromising with one another. You seem to have a solid friendship with your future spouse group three and it reflects in your chemistry and just in the way that the two of you communicate. You seem to have this ability to feel each other as well. You're very intuitively connected. You don't always have to say something to know what this person's feeling and vice versa. You pick up on each other's heart space and each other's, um, what's the word spirit that I'm looking for? Each other's emotional um, baseline. Like, am I happy? Am I sad? Am I feeling a bit disconnected? Am I feeling like I want to get out of here? And your person will be like, oh, actually, I have an appointment at two. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I forgot about that. Sorry, guys. Is that okay if we go? And your person's like, yes. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. You have this amazing ability to like just tune into each other's energies. I feel like you're just very much this sort of kindred soulmate connection, group three. Beautiful, warm, warm, warm connection. Mm -mm -mm. Let's keep going. We can't stop here. We're going to have a look at physical features next. This is the part that gets a little bit crazy. So listen, take what resonates. It's the part that has consumed most of the readings in the last two groups because I want to get as many accurate, honest messages as I can. And the truth is I read for a large audience. So take what resonates. Don't force anything to fit. It applies especially to the physical features section. Group three, what is their soulmate? Excuse me, I'm just calling them your soulmate now. What does their future spouse look like? What does group three's future spouse look like? What does group three's future spouse look like? What does group three's future spouse look like? Oh my gosh, Ness, hi, welcome. Did you bring cake? Who brought the cake? <laughs> Feels like we have all these visitors over here. Um, the answers you need are coming. Full moon and Gemini. Interesting. Well, none of you flipped over, so you're all going back. What is group three's future spouse's physical appearance? What are their physical features? We have work through your fears, new moon and Scorpio. Oh, what is their physical features? We have show the world the real you, a full moon in Aquarius. Notorious Aquarius. One more card, please, Spirit. What do they look like? What does Group 3's future spouse look like? Oh, welcome. Oh, we have a Capricorn out here. Your hard work is paying off a new moon in Capricorn. Interesting. Mm, stop. It's giving me weird feelings in a good way, but it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I feel cringe. That's how I can describe it. I cringe. We also have a time to give rather than take new moon and voyago. So in terms of this person's physical features, holy heck. Well, first of all, I think they like to work out. I think they like to go to the gym or they have like a sport or some sort of hobby that is about like exercise and just maintaining a strong vessel. If it's not exercise, it is a health routine. OK, so this person might just like to go for long walks and they don't see it as exercise because they're not wearing exercise clothes, but they just love nature. So without fail. Every Thursday morning at 6 a.m., they'll go for a walk. It could be 6 p.m. for some of you. This person's a night owl. But I just think that they like to take care of themselves. They also are invested in healthy eating. And again, I use that word to describe it, but I have a feeling that the way this person is, <laughs> they're not going to be attached to the word healthy. They're going to be someone who challenges that word. And it's more just about balance and holisticness and doing what feels good. So I feel like they just, do things in a way of like being more conscious about their physical body and trying to make sure that they're taking advantage of of their body as well like I'm, I've only given one body one heart etc etc I got to take advantage of it so I do think there's something about this person's physical appearance that is quite strong and and I'm hearing supple okay um why the supple no they're showing me boobies so I'll take it as it resonates it's not gonna apply to everybody um it's not supposed to be 18 plus but as soon as you talk about people's bodies i see all kinds of things so i'm gonna have to be careful i um can't say certain words on youtube youtube's very strict and they will demonetize me if I say certain words. So I can say that the chesticles, if they're a fe female or anyone that has boobs, yeah, they're very supple. Okay, moving forward. What else can we see here, spirit? The answers you need are coming full moon in Gemini. Interesting. 
I have a feeling that this full moon in Gemini is more talking about like their eyes and something to do with the way that they look at you. Are they secretive? No. <laughs> so it's like, no. <laughs> this person likes to be close to you when they talk to you. They like to lean into conversation. They like to be close. Um, that's how they show that they're interested in you in the first place. And it's going to be an ongoing thing in your relationship. They will lean in to talk to you. They'll like come really close and they'll like look at you. And all you will see is their eyes. That's how close they are. Maybe their eyes and their mouth. Because sometimes their mouth is higher than their eyes. Um, in terms of their head is higher. But I just feel like they're a very close speaker, especially with you. Um, okay, I gotta be careful what I say here. They said only with you, only with you. So you have a jealous streak, group three. <laughs> only with you. <laughs> their eyes, their eyes, their eyes, their eyes. They're a close speaker. Anything else with full moon and Gemini spirit? With their physicality? Teeth. Teeth? What's about their teeth? Their teeth might be crooked on the bottom jaw, but you kind of like that. There's something to point out about them, okay? The bottom jaw, teeth might be crooked a little bit. Um, what else? I can't tell what that is, sorry. I'm trying to channel um, a place between their eyes. What's going on between their eyes? There could be a scar there. Or they could be like a furrow line, like between their eyebrows, there's like a furrow line where they frown a lot. Um, something between their eyes. A scar, a beauty mark, like as in a mole or a freckle or a furrow line, there's something between their eyes. Interesting. We're going to have to move forward because I feel like we're just getting silly now. There's something else on their face. What is it, spirit? There's a line. Does this person have scars on them? Why do they have scars? Maybe they were very active when they were a kid, but they seem to have a scar on their face somewhere. It's like a line on their cheek. Um, oh, this is so bizarre. I'm just seeing a line on someone's cheek. So obviously I don't think that's going to apply to all of you. <laughs> if thousands of you watch this and thousands of you have picked this group, that won't apply to all of you, but it could be a very specific message because it's going to stand out for those of you who it's meant for. Um, we're going to move forward because this is what I mean when I say it gets very specific and <laughs> almost to the point where it's unhelpful. So we're going to keep going. We have work through your fears, new moon and Scorpio. So interesting, new moon and Scorpio. Honestly, Scorpio, immediately, I'm terrible. When, it, when I think of physicality and Scorpio, I think immediately of your sexual organs. I think immediately of, like, the vulva, the testicles. Um, can I say these words on YouTube without getting banned? i got to be careful. Not banned, but, like, barred. They'd give you, like, little warnings if you do it too much. Um, yeah, they're sexual organs. Okay, it's not supposed to be like that, but you're going to be very happy. That's all I can say for this portion of your reading. They're going to, you're going to be very happy with what they're working with down there. The new moon in Scorpio does make me think that there's something a little exciting, intriguing, and scary about what's going on there. there. So either it's just like very different or it's something that you want to get to know better. You know, it's not just going to be like a one instance thing. You're going to have to have like a whole weekend to explore each other's bodies and figure out how to how to make it work. Um, which is exciting, by the way. Don't feel afraid. Scorpio does say work through your fears. It feels like it's just something that is very passionate and intriguing and mysterious and you're excitable and you're kind of just like, what? <laughs> I've never seen it like that before. Oh my gosh. What else can you tell us with Scorpio here? There's something else going on with Scorpio. Yeah, Scorpio makes me think of lips, which is so interesting. There's something going on with their lips. Either they've got really full lips, or it's something about the way that they talk and their mouth moves. This is a message that came through for another group as well. There's something about the way that their mouth moves. I heard what that mouth do. <laughs> okay. There's definitely a lot of physical chemistry between the two of you. A lot of passion. <laughs> 
What else can we sell them, Spirit? We also have show the world the real you, full moon Aquarius. This person's physical appearance is with Aquarius. They're very unique dresser is what I can tell you. They might be someone that likes to keep a particular hairstyle, okay? Like they keep that hairstyle for a while and then they switch it up and they go to the new hairstyle. Um, but they like to maintain something about their appearance and it likes to, they like to keep it that way. They feel good about themselves when they maintain that standard. I also think that with Aquarius, they're just someone that dresses very uniquely. Um, so they kind of either, this is what I find with Aquarius, is either their whole look is unique, or there's only one thing about them that they keep unique. Like they just like good shoes. Some Aquarius people could look like straight up dads, and then they're wearing like the new Nike Air Force ones. And you're like, wait a minute, what? Like everything else could be purchased for 20 bucks in total from your local Target or Kmart store. And then they're wearing like $200 shoes on their feet. You know, like there's a unique side to this person's dressing style that stands out. It could be necklaces. It could be rings. Maybe they like to wear. It could be like dresses. It could be trousers. It could be shoes. It could be socks. There's one thing about their fashion that stands out and they like to keep it interesting. It could be something hidden if they have a corporate job like their socks or their underwear um, or their tie if they have to have like a straight serious suit maybe they have an interesting fun tie um, I also think that for Aquarius to be here there is something about this person's back that you like which is honestly the imagery on this card as well this woman's back god damn sorry to bring you the Lord into this but like wow damn I have been striving for a back like that it's amazing. Strong, strong person. So I do think that there's something about this person's back that you really like, either their posture or the way they carry themselves in general, or it could be physically their back. They got a good back. <laughs> Let's move forward. We also have new moon in Capricorn. Your hard work is paying off. Capricorn is all about the knees <laughs> and the joints. <laughs> but if I um, liken it to what I'm feeling intuitively, because I mean, hey, knees are a thing. Some people have knee fetishes. No judgment, all love. But otherwise, what I could say about Capricorn is that there may be, again, something about this person's style that you do notice. They have a bougie side to them. I do think that Capricorn is also saying that this person might have really nice teeth or... The other thing that I notice about Capricorns in general, I don't know, I don't like to typecast a whole sign, like that's ridiculous, but they might be someone who has like broad shoulders. I don't know why this is a thing, but all the Capricorns that I know have broad shoulders. So it's coming back to that idea of a strong back and broad shoulders. Um, what else could I say about Capricorn? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> who sings that? She works hard for her money. <laughs> beautiful lady but yeah i don't know why money has to come into this okay you know what i was told this was a full read and it was by somebody who didn't know i was a capricorn but somebody said to me you can always tell who a capricorn is because they put so much effort into their work that their appearance does slip sometimes to the point where a Capricorn woman, and I'm reciting what she says, I don't necessarily agree with it, but it made me chuckle. A Capricorn woman will have like a fully ready outfit, but her nails will be like chipped or like her sh shoes might not be like matching. Like there's always one thing to sh indicate that the Capricorn ran out of time getting ready because they were more invested in their work than they were in getting to the event on time. <laughs> like there's always that one one thing that slips so this person like may have like a well put together appearance and then there'll be like one thing that might slip and for me personally like I put so much effort into like when I go out I go out I look completely different but like you can tell when I like ran out of time because my edges aren't laid or <laughs> like my nails aren't like I don't worry about my nails I like my natural nails or like maybe my toenails aren't done though like there's always that one little thing and ever since somebody told me that I always pay attention to that now and I'm like crap she's right <laughs> every time there's always one thing so that could be the case with this person doesn't mean they're a Capricorn but there may be like that one thing about them that that kind of slips a little bit with their appearance just a little bit and it's not so much that they're a slob or they're lazy they're just their priorities are elsewhere you know so that's what I'm seeing for their physical appearance very interesting let's have a look at their love language now group three please spirit what is their future spouse's love language
Okay, now, I've got to tell you the real tea real quick. If I get any initials, I'm going to put them straight back because it is not that kind of reading. And unfortunately, I kept the initials for group one and it was a whole hiatus of... of a lot of happenings so in order to get more specific and to save time because we got a lot of juicy stuff to get to i am going to put all of these initials back and we're going to continue with your person's love language so i'm seeing some confirming signs already but we'll start over here with august separation so in terms of a love language this person may have abandonment issues which makes me think that they are someone that is very much wanting to be physical um very i uh, for lack of a better word, to put it in an extreme context, clingy, needy, you know, very much like wanting to be here with you. I don't think it's that bad, though. I don't think it's anything that you don't want as well. In fact, I think that you guys are going to just naturally want to spend a lot of time together. Your person is definitely somebody who seems to just like be like... You're like the bee to the honey here. They're, they're, they're your secret honeycomb stash. And you're like, wow, I've been living off maple syrup this whole time. <laughs> I didn't realize how delicious honey was. So very much touchy-feely. They're all about um, physical gestures. They're all about sensual touch. They're all about just being intimate and intimacy in general. I can't remember the five languages of love specifically, but this person is very much here for the physical intimacy. They want that with you. They'll sit close to you in public. They'll cuddle you in public. They'll kiss you in public. They'll stroke your hand in public. Please, Lord, don't let me keep going down this list because it's starting to get a bit... <laughs> They will do everything that is on the borderline of getting arrested with you in public. But it's because this person is just very much like here for you. There's a strong connection to you. And I think that it's a bit scary because I'm not, I don't know if that's just what they're like. But there is one of you in this connection who's not used to that. And it's very much like a, I like it. But I'm still conscious of the fact that people are staring at us kissing in the middle of the street right now. <laughs> I like it, but it's still a little bit uncomfortable at times. And you do warm up to it because um, I just see that it's something that your relationship is is about. Like it's something that forges the two of you being together and comfortable together. We also have root chakra coming out. So in terms of the person's love language, very sentimental person. They they're very much here for values and making the most out of the relationship in the right ways they're not really here to flash each other off and to pretend to be anything that you're not like instead of posting a million posts on facebook about how proud they are and how how beautiful you are they will tell you first and then they'll take a photo of you and be like oh this has been such a good day and then they'll share it you know like so the main objective in that experience is to actually make it a good day and then share it with other people it's not about pretending that it was a good day and sharing it with other people instead of making it a good day. This person is very much here for the fact of like a relationship is solid and our relationship is very much about each other. And if other people get to see it sometimes, that's cool, but that's not the main reason we're together. I feel like they just value the time that you spend together and the opportunities that you have together. And sharing that with other people is just a secondary um bonus it's not the main derivative of why they do these things with you so we also have gemini again <laughs> i'm not surprised could be a gemini in here somewhere i don't see it as a gemini sun though i see it as like a gemini lurking in their moon or rising i do feel like a gemini in terms of their love language is talking i think that this person likes pillow talk for example i could see the two of you just staying up really late at night just talking 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 and being like oh my god oh my god it's two o'clock in the morning you have to get up at five o'clock for work. What are we doing? And then this is just like falling asleep, talking to each other, basically. I just get this beautiful, beautiful connection. And it's like the world doesn't really exist outside of you two. And that sounds selfish, but it's so wholesome being on the inside of that little cozy web that the two of you have with one another. It's literally like who cares that we have to get up early? Like this moment here is something that we're going to cherish. Even if it happens three times this week, it's still a cherish because this conversation may not continue, you know, like these, these moments are important. And because of that, I do think that this person likes to like talk with you. Um, it is very much about staying connected and keeping those conversations. So this is the kind of person that would send you texts and be like, Hey, good morning. Just checking in. How are you? How's your day going? 
Um, hope you had a wonderful uh, day with your family. Um, I know Mondays are tough thinking of you, you know, like, and not to the point where it's obsessive. I need to be careful. I'm giving examples. That list isn't exhaustive. It's just an example of what they would text you. They like to stay connected. We also have Scorpio here. So when it comes to their love language, Swedes, they are here for the sex. <laughs> oh no, that's the word that YouTube hates. Um, they're here for the... <laughs> No, that's even worse. The sound is even worse than the actual word. <laughs> the sound is way more suggestive than the actual word. I'm just digging myself a hole here. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Cat's out of the bag. They like that. They love physical intimacy. Um, Scorpio is deeper than that though. Scorpio is also just about bonding and kind of bracing, embracing each other's like passions and desires. So there's a side to a Scorpio in a committed relationship that other people, other lovers don't get to see. I feel like this is them being really comfortable with you, vice versa, doing things with you that they haven't done with other people and getting to explore sexual desires, passions and fantasies that they haven't with other people. So a clear sign of this person's infatuation with you is the fact that they don't want to leave the bed once they're in there with you, okay? Their love language is very passionate. Um, and this is displayed through other forms of affection, not just SEX, but also, you know, cuddles, also kisses, also nuzzling, also like just holding each other, um, giving you a squeeze. <laughs> You are this person's main squeeze. Why did that keep coming up? We also have crown chakra coming out for you. Sahasrara. Is that it? Sahasrara. Anyway, crown chakra is this beautiful, beautiful feeling of just kind of being connected, knowing each other so well, right? Not even having to say something to each other, just knowing how they're feeling, knowing what they're going through, knowing by that look in their eyes that they're giving you the red flag, like, I need to get out of here, I'm not comfortable. Feeling like there's something up with them, calling them and finding out that they're actually very upset and you're lucky, you're, they're very grateful that you called. There's a strong connection with this person that is not explainable with words. You just know things about each other. Very connected. We have another initial. I'm going to put that back. All right. We also have the 12th house, Pisces. Interesting. Wow. In terms of their love language, they're very much here for the like gifts, gestures. Not expensive gifts, though. This is someone who would just like to kind of put a lot of thought into their gift giving. Not in the way where, like, I just want to give you, like, this because it's expensive. I want to give you this because you told me that when you were five years old, your fish died, and it really made you never want to have a fish again. So I want to show you that that story and you opening up to me in that vulnerable way is meaningful. I'm going to give you this beautiful... Um, snow globe with a fish in it so that you can keep this memory and that that symbol of us gaining emotional intimacy as a reminder of where we're going to next there's a lot of thought that goes into their affections towards you and i feel like it is with this idea of getting closer to you this person just really wants to like feel you emotionally very strong emotional connection what else could i say about the 12th house in terms of their love language <laughs> what okay that's weird <laughs> a freak in the sheets a straight face on the streets okay freak in the sheets straight face on the streets that's interesting because i know that they would kiss you in public but apparently it's like a thousand times more intense in private wow okay look at <laughs> It's good. It's just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> very intense. We also have Aries coming out now. First house, first house, my bad. First house. So yeah, they want to create new experiences with you. They want to do new things. They don't want to go by this tra the traditional route. They don't want to follow somebody else's legacy, somebody else's plan, somebody else's tried, tested, true path. They want to create one with you. They want to carve one with you. They want to go through it with you. So this person is very much here for experiences. They're out here trying to create new memories, new experiences with you. And I also, with Aries, this is someone who likes physical activity as well. So it makes me think that this person would like to go on trips with you that are like more about like hiking or camping or, or going on that walk to the lighthouse that not many people go to because the view is amazing. Um, doing those things with you, like making it a physical experience as well. 
What else have we got here? We have Saturn. Speaking of physical, yeah, I do think that this person is very committed to you. Their love language is reflected in their actions. They're someone who will get, when they're serious about you, they'll take serious actions towards you. They'll start referring to you as their partner. They'll start including you on those big family trips, or they'll start thinking about you when they make those big decisions in their life. They'll start factoring in, you know, okay, it's not just me, it's my partner as well. And they'll just start referring to you in a more serious way, um, start taking care of you almost. We also have gratitude. So yes, they want to show you and they like to be shown that you're grateful for them as well. So their love language is a reflection of how they want to be treated. And gratitude is telling me that this person just wants to be treated um, like you appreciate them. They, they like to be shown through your gestures that, that you appreciate them. And they also like to be told when you don't appreciate them because they come on strong sometimes. So if they're being a bit too intense, you got to tell them, okay, <laughs> I need to keep working. Just because I'm at home doesn't mean I'm not working. <laughs> we also have Taurus here fixed sign of Taurus, no less. We also, Taurus is bringing a lot more sensuality. So I don't think I need to go over this again. They're a very sensual person. And when I say, why aren't you focusing? Hello. When I say sensual, I mean touch, taste, smell, hearing, sight, oh, everything. This person is very much here for the senses and their love language reflects that. They're the kind of person that would like take you on um, like out to dinner at a strange place with nice food and then you guys would go stargazing, you know, and then you would go to like a place that they like the smell of or they like the way that the um, it sounds like they're a very sensual person. So that's reflected in the way that they show affection is all I can really say. I feel like this is where the reading will. Yeah, it's hard to describe because I'm I'm trying to be conscious of the time as well, but very sensual person. Um, they like to create experiences based on their sensuality, their, their senses. We also have the second house here, which is talking about that again. So yes, their love language is a reflection of their sensuality. And I do think that there's someone who, um, excuse me, please. There's someone who, um, anyway, you know, that's the second house. There's someone who likes to be very nurturing in general. Um, but the second house energy, they put a lot of value on your ability to connect through these experiences. And I think that's why you're so different to other people as well. They like the way your face lights up when they do these things for you. And they really, 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 really appreciate it when you do these things for them. It means so much to them that you put all this thought into these moments with them. We also have headache here. So interesting. As a love language, I think that you guys talk, 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 talk to the point where it's like, okay, no, we need to go to sleep. Well, I'm getting actually really tired. I'm, I actually have a headache. I need to go to sleep. Like, It's so interesting. It reminds me of like when you're a kid and you go over to your best friend's house to sleep over, except that you are also lovers in this case and you're not children, but you have that idea of like, it's okay. Like we can just stay up all night and talk. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Anyway, that's what I'm seeing for their love language. I'm going to push these out of the way. And we are going to go on to how do you bond with your future spouse? What brings the two of you closer together? Group three. How does group three bond with their future spouse spirit? We have the queen of wands coming out in the upright position. I always do these weird accents. Oh my gosh. Group three, how do they bond with their future spouse? Oh, look at this major arcana coming out. The moon, yes, yeah, stargazing. You guys both like it, I think. I'm like 90% sure that it will be stargazing. We have Empress, mm, the Empress, excuse me, the Empress. Group three, how do they bond? I mean, are we surprised? Scorpio is coming out again, the death card. Is there anything else here? No. How do they bond spirit? Thank you. The three of wands. They nearly showed me the ten of pentacles again. So I do think that this person is very supportive of your vision. They really admire your ambition. And there's someone who kind of helps you feel more confident about the steps that you've taken away from somebody else's goals. You've taken steps away from somebody else. And this person's like, you can do it. I believe in you. You can do this. We can create our own future. You got this. You got this. I'll be right there supporting you, helping you, being here for you. And it is still very much about you as well. 
Um, anyway, this future spouse of yours, group three, they are someone who you bond with based off your physical intimacy. I'm not going to lie. But through that, you're able to kind of get more of an emotional connection. You're able to kind of talk about things. I feel like you're very attracted to each other, but your really deep moment is well okay first of all you both use sex together i need to say wait that word i'm not supposed to say that word you both use intimacy as an opportunity to be close with your partners in every way and i feel like that's felt you have respect for each other when you are first physically intimate and that's shown and felt in the act but another opportunity to get close to this person is forged through some sort of experience under the stars you spend time with this person at night and you kind of have this deep and meaningful conversation with them where you talk about your deepest, darkest secrets, fears, aspirations, goals, dreams, desires, all of it. And I could go on all night until the sun comes up with this kind of person. Actually, I think it does. You just have this opportunity to kind of get to know them and it might just be one night but it's it's like eight hours in one night <laughs> and before you know it you're like holy crap like this person is already in my heart and we've only had three dates together like what it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy and yet it's so beautifully true and i do think that this kind of leads into the two of you having a deep appreciation for one another because you also bond over here with the empress through supporting each other in your own individual interests and goals and desires. And this is a reflection of making each other feel confident and helping each other feel, um, it kind of is like good about yourselves, if that makes sense. Helping each other feel admired and able and equipped. And it's just like you're each other's biggest like support, if I'm honest. Not to say that other people don't support you as well, but a big part of your relationship is still supporting each other as well as the connection that you share. And I do think with the Empress here, you get closer together through some sort of experience that has to do with like mother mothering and potentially childbirth. You know, take it if it resonates. Obviously, that's not going to fit everybody's mold of what they want in life. But if you have a child with this person or if children are involved in your connection, that is how the two of you bond deeper because it allows them to see this nurturing side to you that is very maternal and caring and giving and vice versa, protective, supportive, nurturing, understanding, um, guiding in general and just supportive in general. So it, it is something that brings the two of you closer together, them seeing you flourish like that in a different way. And it feels like the overall energy of the Empress is just this appreciation for each other's like way of being in, in terms of success, whether you measure success by money or happiness or family. It just feels like that you get to see each other in that environment and it's very much a moment of like, wow, you're incredible. <laughs> and I feel so privileged to see this side of you. So with the death card over here, you bond through some sort of change that is very emotionally pulling. Um, it could be it could be the loss of a loved one. Doesn't have to be though. The death card is more just this transformative way of, of feeling based on like needing to let go of something from your past in order to embrace something new and you can't truly forget what has happened but you can't let what has happened hold you back from stepping forward if that makes sense so you have to move forward with the um, memory that that has happened while also knowing that that may not cannot hold you back from what you will experience in your future. So it does feel like you help each other get through some dif difficult things. And I do think that you're very helpful for each other's like emotional growth, very supportive, very, very much like a loyal companion and confidant. Like you really tell each other everything. There's no secrets between the two of you. Um, you're very open, you're very easy to talk to this person. Too much so because you read each other's minds. It's kind of like, ah, get out of my head. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell you that yet. <laughs> you can't keep secrets from each other, so you don't bother. Instead, you kind of welcome that, and it becomes this beautiful, trusting, kind, warm, 
um, connection where like there's no judgment there's all love and compassion it's very kind we also have the three of wands over here so you bond through some sort of experience that is a little bit like it has a little bit of uncertainty but it has a lot of excitement and it's like a mo new opportunity so I feel like this is your you taking your relationship to the next level you bond through an experience where okay well things are getting serious it's time to kind of look at the horizon for what it is and figure out where we want to go to next and this may be about your relationship and labels or it could be about as a couple like what is our next adventure where are we going to next what am i going to do who are you going to be where are we going to live how are we going to feed ourselves you know and it's very exciting it's a little bit scary but you got each other and it's a bonding experience overall you overall are able to help each other through very 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 difficult times reconciling moments of heartbreak or um, uncertainty in terms of being dealt a situation that is very shocking and sudden and you deal with it very well and you help each other kind of get through those moments curbing those those fears and getting through those moments without ignoring them as well very wholesome energy bottom deck energy is the seven of cups so yeah this person is like your your grounding energy they help ground you when you feel uncertain or confused or you don't really know what to do you talk with this person you feel more sure of who you are they help you understand what you truly want and they help you feel confident in stepping towards what you truly want they're very much like someone that you look up to and really admire as well um okay last question does this person why did i say it like that does does this person connect with group three in their dreams does group three's future spouse connect with them in their dreams excuse me spirit there's too many cards good things wow this is bizarre it's a weird yes not them their higher self their higher self connects with you to protect you from things that are harmful Group three, does the person connect with them in their dreams? Healing through rest. Mm, yeah, their higher self does. Their 3D matrix self is not aware of you yet. We have justice here reversed. They're not aware of you yet, but their higher self does very protective of you and is very much trying to steer you through things until the two of you can come together. You'll meet this person soon, apparently. Um, yeah, it'll be very obvious who they are because there'll be a sense of like, wow, you're amazing. But at the same time, um, yeah, you'll, you'll feel like you do know them already. You feel like you do know them already, but I don't think that they, if you don't know who this person is, you're not really connecting with them in your dreams. You're connecting with their higher self. So their higher self sits above them to guide them, but their higher self is also connecting to you and reaching out to you when you dream to protect you and to help steer you towards good things. This, their higher self is very protective of you, group three, and very much focused on helping you heal so that the two of you can come together. Their higher self is very invested in bringing you into partnership as a form of justice towards their person because their higher self feels like this person is also getting distracted and is... Um, likely to kind of yeah they they just need to be coming together with you soon so i do think that you're very connected in terms of like energetically in the fifth dimension but um in terms of the 3d i don't think you're aware of each other yet that's what i can say when it comes to dreaming of them everything will be okay yeah this person's energy connects with you to help remind you that everything will be okay so that's what i'm seeing for you group three i hope it was helpful on my days what a lengthy reading lots of information there is going to be a extended reading now the extended reading will be an 18 plus reading because i don't have to be as censored on ribbon obviously i gotta be careful in general but um i don't have to be as censored so the things that we're going to be covering in your extended reading is what does your future spouse like about you in terms of your physical features your body um what is the first time with them going to be like what is the chemistry between the two of you like and what attracted them to you in the first place so if you are interested in the extended the links are in the description box below i do need to take a quick second though to thank your guides my guides and our spiritual teams for helping me channel today's messages and for keeping me safe while doing so i also need to give you the real mvp a true shout out 
Thank you so much for supporting me here on YouTube, for joining me, exchanging energy with me. I really appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe for part three. Part three will be out very soon. I don't have a specific date yet. I just do it based on when I have the energy to. So thank you so much. I shall see you in another video. Bye. Hi, group four, and welcome. If you guys had the, oh, your self card. I forgot about this card. If you chose the yourself card from Sarah's beautiful deck, then this is going to be your reading. We're talking about your future spouse, future spouse part two, very in depth. Now your card is going to be close so I can see it, but I do have to put it out of frame so that we have room to fit all of your other cards. So I'm actually going to put it over here for now and I will refer to it if I feel it is tied in to the other mess excuse me, other messages we receive. I might just need some water actually. Goodness me, wow, group four. We have a lot to cover. I do have a list of the topics slash questions we'll be covering in the description box if you wanna follow along with me. We're starting with the first one. What will your relationship with your future spouse be like? So, using my trusty right away tarot deck, group four please spirit. What will their relationship with their future spouse be like? What will group fours? We have the seven of wands coming out. And I do need to apologize. If you're a part of group four for part one of this series, you've already had this question answered for you in your extended reading. But I am still going to offer everybody the opportunity to get answers for that question because I do think that it is a very pivotal um, question to know or, or thing to know about your relationship. And I do want to offer that to everyone. So just a quick little apology if you're a part of group four for part one. What will their relationship with their future spouse be like, spirit? Group four, what will their relationship? We have judgment coming out for you as well. Intriguing. Group four, what will their relationship with their future spouse be like? We have the Ace of Wands. I'm not surprised. I did see it peeking out before. What will their relationship with their future spouse be like? This is the card they wanted to show us. The Eight of Pentacles. We also have the Nine of Cups. Welcome. I didn't know if that card was going to come out, but okay. Bottom deck energy is the Five of Cups. Wow reversed which is helpful your future spouse's relationship you guys are going to be very much about moving forward and helping each other through difficult times trying to make the most out of things i think that there's a very serious logical side of your relationship that doesn't like to just gloss over bad things but you kind of have come from a place where one of you is like, you know what, I've been through worse, we can do this. And the other one is like, oh, it's only going to bring us down if we continue to focus on this. So you both seem to be striving to like look at the best out of any situation. And one of it is because <laughs> you really don't want to like project the, like you've been through worse in your past and you don't want that to be projected into your future. And the other person almost has like a carefree disposition where it feels like they grew up quite um, I'm hearing sheltered and privileged, so I use those words lightly, but there is sort of this hard, cold Uranus Aquarius energy here with judgment that's kind of like forcing this situation to feel a lot more um, cut and dry than it needs to be. It's like the two of you come from different worlds, but you both share the same objective. When dealt with a difficult situation, we just move forward through it. We don't let it bring us down. We keep pushing. And I see that that is the foundation of your relationship. You're really here to help each other overcome the obstacles and challenges that you face, especially with this card. This is underdog energy. This is like, you know what? Nobody expected little old me from my little old town to have this big, uh, big responsibility and this massive job and this incredibly impactful position in life. And there's this real energy of just supporting each other and helping each other be like these aspiring um 
underdog energies that, that overcome challenges and that are successful in whatever they put their mind to. I do think that sometimes you're very ambitious or one of you is particularly ambitious and it kind of leads to um, you guys needing to have serious conversations about, well, this isn't working. Like, I understand you really want to have your own cryptocurrency, but <laughs> it's consuming a lot of your time. And um, seriously, like, it needs to change. We can't keep doing this. So there seems to be this open energy where you're supportive, but you're also very realistic about each other's ambitions and goals. So your relationship is something that does reinvent itself as you mature and as your ideas of the world around you mature, as your ideas of what you can and can't do mature. It does feel like your relationship does become very serious and you kind of do have this ability to keep each other grounded while also still trying to push each other towards your aspirations. It's very interesting. We'll see how it translates in other parts of this reading because we're covering some pretty interesting topics. But I want to move forward to the Ace of Wands as well. The Ace of Wands is this energy of like starting something and, and birthing something into existence. So your future spouse could be someone that you have a child with straight off the cuff. Or I want to say that your future spouse could be some, excuse me, someone who you create something with in this lifetime. It's someone who is very much an inspiring um, muse in your life and your relationship creates something through its shared interest. So this is often seen as a child because with all that energy, right, that passion, um, naturally it creates life. But um it could also just be like a, a new interest or a hobby or some sort of like program or like a workshop, a community thing. Um, it could even be like an online forum. It could be like a blog. It could be a travel diary. It could be an online Instagram, you know, account that you both share because you both like traveling. So let's just keep everyone posted on this account. Whatever it is, it's something that you both seem to take pride in and it's very much an outlet for you. So your relationship really takes a, a turn for, for the good um, when you birth this creation together because it's seen as an opportunity to kind of feed creative energy into something and to inspire yourselves and others uh, with this act as well. It's very interesting. I feel like the way that I'm describing this is very cold and removed, which makes me think that an Aquarius is involved. <laughs> no tea, no shade. I love Aquarius people, but it's just very much like that. Um, we also have the Eight of Pentacles in the reverse position. He's coming back. What is it, sir? You okay? Oh, what? How dare I film at home? So rude of me. The Eight of Pentacles reversed is just this overall feeling of like knowing when to stop versus when to keep going. So your relationship, honestly, I feel like they're the, that your partner is going to be someone who's not just a yes man, you know, like not to gender people, but a yes man is the definition of somebody who's just all here for the yes, 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 and can't give you a reality check when you need one. Complete opposite of what this person's like. This person will be like, um, <laughs> listen, love your energy, love your ideas, but there's no way you can physically do this. We've got to work smarter, not harder. Let's go back to the drawing board together and figure this out together. They're a very realistic, practical mind that keeps you humble, if I'm honest. They make you very, very, very happy. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. You're very happy, but they keep you humble. I do think that there's nothing that you won't do for this person. If they truly asked, and I don't think they would, there's nothing that you wouldn't do for them. I think that they strongly encourage you to do things for yourself and they don't want to be like taken care of or babied. Um, but at the same time, there's nothing that you wouldn't do for them. You have this beautiful um, understanding of the way that they talk to you so directly. And it reminds me of my little brother, actually, who's um, unofficially on the spectrum. He hasn't had a formal diagnosis yet, but he's starting to test positive for a lot of different um, 
things and not to say that your person's on the spectrum but like he has that ability where <laughs> he'll just call it for what it is say it how it is and it's very cut and dry and it's very much like a okay thank you um actually that's a bit rude you don't say that to people but okay it's also the truth <laughs> and it, that's what it kind of feels like with this person it's not that it's rude it's just that this person is not a yes person they will tell you the truth and they'll make sure that it's constructive right it's helpful it's something that you can learn from. It's not just addressing things that you can't change, but it's pointing out things that um, you may be focusing on that aren't going to change as well. This person would say, like, it's really good that you're interested in going to Uranus, but we're not even on Mars yet. And you're feeding a lot of energy and time into into getting to Uranus. We haven't even gone to Mars yet. Like there's that kind of realistic sort of. And now some people might call them a killjoy for it, but I feel like you're able to look at them and go, God, why do you have to point out the obvious? Thanks a lot. Okay, so what are we supposed to do? Let's go to the moon instead. <laughs> Let's create a resort on the moon instead. <laughs> you're like what? Okay, they have this out of the box way of thinking, and I do think that it's helpful. It's not just this like pointing out the worst it's like actually maybe your focus should be shifted over here let's work on this instead of moving towards something brand new and and explosively different <laughs> so that's what i'm seeing there we are going to move forward to what your person's physical features are now as well what an interesting relationship there will be more to talk about like in terms of your relationship but we do have to keep moving forward spirit group four what does their future spouse look like? Mm -hmm. We have be bold and make the first move, cardinal moon. What does their future spouse look like? We have a time for healing, balsamic moon. What does their future spouse look like? A personal issue reaches resolution, a full moon in cancer. What does group four's future spouse look like, spirit? What do you need to release, waning moon? And your bottom deck energy is the south node. Don't let your past hold you back. Interesting. So your person, in terms of physicality, they may not have changed their look for some time, or they may be someone who just is very sure of themselves and what they should look like in this life. Like once they've created their self-image to match what they see themselves being on the inside, I think that they will maintain that self-image for a very long time. This seems to be someone who may have had something happen to them in their past that really impacted the way that they see themselves. And I do think that it's kind of obvious like there's something about this person's appearance that speaks of their identity like it makes me think of like you know with certain people if you know a town well you know that certain people with certain physical features are from specific parts of that town for example there's something about this person's appearance that they can't change and i don't know if they like that about themselves it almost feels like a burden a reminder a constant reminder of who they are and where they came from and it's not always in a positive way they feel a little bit like burdened by this but i do want to say that there's something about their presence that is very striking and dominant with cardinal moon here they have a very striking presence they really fill a room and they don't have to be a tall person to do this i can personally say my best friends that are really short are some of the boldest personalities in a room at any given time you could put them in a room full of footy players and i've been in a room with them full of footy players and they are still the biggest person in that room <laughs> because of their personality so your future spouse just has this energy about them that takes over a room and i firmly believe that this is a more of a testament to their nature and their character they are a larger than life personality and they may come across as very outspoken because of that but at the core of who they are and i do think that they're very kind and and loving and they're someone that makes you very very happy so also over here with their physical appearance i can tell you that there is something to do with their um, this the last time this card came out it was showing me their smile so I do think that you find their smile very attractive it's the way that they show their teeth when they smile though it's the way that they smile with their teeth either it's a crooked grin or there's something about the way that their teeth show that just kind of gives you this like oh heart skips a beat feeling <laughs> 
heart fluttery feeling. There's something else going on with this card though. Spirit, what is this card talking about when it comes to their physical features? Showing me noses again. That was so confusing. One of the groups made me draw. Well, they didn't make me, but Spirit made me draw them a nose. What is going on with this person, Spirit? They have a, a nose shape that you like. I'm seeing the side profile and it's actually quite like strong you know like it goes like that it's a pretty strong profile for some of you it curves in at the top it kind of goes in like that but for most of you it's a pretty strong nose um what else can you tell them about this person's physical appearance their face shape for some of you this person's face shape is quite round there's two shapes that i'm getting i hope i can draw this oh you're making me draw it again there's two shapes that I'm getting. I'll show you. The first shape is just like a really round face. And I think that if this person is feminine, they're not really happy with their round face. But their round face makes their smile look even better because it's just like, oh, so precious. And the other face shape that I'm getting is this really almost like sullen face um, is how I would describe it. It looks like a sort of a hexagon. And that might be because of the way that the hair is on top as well. Um, but these are the two face shapes that I'm seeing for your future spouse. It is like a really round one. And then there's this like hexagon shape as well. So, <laughs> I mean, listen, I just do what I'm told. Those are the two face shapes I'm seeing. <laughs> I probably didn't hold it there long enough. So you may have to go back and pause it, but... Um, we have a personal issue reaches resolution, full moon in Cancer. So Cancer is a very interesting energy when I think of physical features. This makes me immediately think of your heart and your chest. I don't know why, it's just the way that Cancer works for me. I think of somebody's heart and their chest. And personally speaking, also hands. So it makes me think that you really like this person's hands. It also makes me think that this, something stands out about this person's hands. Um... It might be an inside joke, like when you've met them, they had really cold hands and you were like, oh, Edward Cullen, what? <laughs> like, I don't know, but my hands are really warm right now. So I don't, I don't know. There's something about their hands that stands out. Maybe you like their fingers, their fingernails, the way that you, your hands fit together. Maybe this person like sits at the table like this and likes to hold their hands in front of them. Maybe they walk around with their hands behind their back, you know, like... Um, there's something about their hands that's really standing out for me. And also with cancer, I think of the chest and your heart as well. So I do think that you like this person's chest, whether they're, you know, whatever they've got going on, whether they got tiggle bitties or whether it's just like a flat chest. I think that you just like their chest in general group four. Um, there's something about the warmth that that chest provides for you. It's a very cozy place to be physically. I also think with cancer that there's something about the way that this person walks that you like. I'm picturing that cancer crab, you know, obviously crabs walk sideways. I don't think this person will walk sideways, but there's something about the way that they walk in general. Um, that stands out for you and you come to really love it especially like for some of you this is obviously a smaller percentage there could be like a bit of a slight like disability or something going on with their walk like they have a limp or something that they're a bit self-conscious about but for you it's what makes them them it's how they carry themselves it's a part of who they are and it's something that you come to really love and cherish is what i'm hearing cherish we also have what do you need to release a waning moon coming out here so this makes me think in terms of a physical appearance as someone who is out here clinging to their self-image like i don't i don't think that they are someone who quickly changes once they've got it they keep it for a while i think that if anything you'll be the one encouraging them to spice up their their wardrobe or like hey maybe get a different haircut this time like i've never seen you with short hair or i've never seen you with like slightly long hair or i've never seen you with bangs I've never seen you with blonde hair like <laughs> it feels like you're going to be the one that's going to have to kind of encourage them to try something new when it comes to their appearance they get very comfortable um, looking a certain way and, and acting a certain way so <laughs> that's what I'm seeing in terms of their physical appearance next we're going to look at their love language so I'll be using my tissue box messages for this group or what does their future spouse's what is their future spouse's love language? Group four, please, spirit. What is their future spouse's love language? Group 
for now quick little uh, what's the word um, announcement announcement PA public announcement thank you I'm not going to be taking initials I did that for group one and unfortunately it just wow took us on a tangent and I don't think it was overall helpful so we're only looking at what their love language is so I will be putting initials back um, and we will just be going with the other messages from my tissue box and quick little plug if you like these tissue box messages, I have a beginner's template that I sell as a PDF file for you to download on my website. It only costs five Australian dollars, which roughly translates to $3.89, I think, in the US or $3.69, something like that. <laughs> Why is $69? It's quite cheap depending on where you are in the world. So if you, want, if you like what you see here and you want to get your own tissue box started, it's a very powerful divination tool just to kind of test your intuition. I do sell them on my website and it's a good little starter kit and you can just add your own messages like I've done here. I am grateful for my options. Wow. So their love language is varied, to be honest with you. They don't have any one way of expressing themselves. This is someone who kind of appreciates everything that a relationship gives them. But I want to get specific spirit. What is this person's specific love languages? I am grateful for my love. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's because they are trying things out for the first time with you. Maybe this person hasn't had many relationships before you. Group four, maybe you're like one of the most significant relationships they've had in their life, but they seem to be keen to kind of try a bit of everything when it comes to love and expressing love in a connection. Um, I feel like they have a very sentimental side to them though for February Pisces Aquarius to be here. That is like an Aquarius Pisces cusp card slash month. So it feels like there's this kind of energy about them that does develop first as like an analytical thing like thinking what is the right thing to do and then more of an intuitive thing acting upon what they feel is the right thing to do so I feel like it's a very interesting dynamic with them they want to make you happy they try to be honest with you they try to be helpfully honest with you they'll never lie to you they'll tell you what it is how it is they will do their best to be strategic with their communication so that it's helpful not just critical um, but at the end of the day, they have all this love for you. And that's what it comes down to is that like, you actually, I really care about you. And if this is what makes you happy, then it's what makes you happy. So how I see that translating is this person would really appreciate it. If you did something that like they thought you didn't notice about them, like maybe you, you buy them a beard trimmer, you know, <laughs> and you're like, I've just noticed that you've been using my scissors to trim your beard once a month. And I thought I'd finally just buy you your own one. And they're like, what? I didn't even think you noticed that, you know, <laughs> or maybe, you know, if they're on the other side of the gender pole, um, maybe you notice them like using, I don't know, something else to do another thing. And they just like, wow, I never thought you paid attention to me gardening with bloody surgical gloves. Thank you so much for getting me <laughs> gardening gloves from the hardware store. <laughs> I've been using surgical gloves for the last two months because we had heaps of those. <laughs> so it's very interesting. Like they like gift ideas that are thought out, that are planned, and they like receiving things that are planned and like require a little bit of thought to put into it. But overall, like sentimental as well. We also have December. I'm grateful for my hard work. So interesting. A little bit of Capricornus, um, Sagittarius, Capricorn. So this makes me think that they actually like surprises. They would tell you that they don't, but they like surprises that are planned. They like it when you've put effort into something and it's a surprise to them. And it also has like an excitement thing to it. So maybe they like trips or unexpected trips, unexpected holidays, unexpected little um, picnics away from the house, unexpected journeys. They like those sorts of things. I do think that this person likes physical touch from you. I don't think they like physical touch a lot though. I mean, in the sense of I'm not getting them to be an overtly like touchy person in public but when it's just the two of you for February Pisces to be here yes they would love to like cuddle they would love those moments in bed just like having you next to them on them some of you this person likes to be have you on them 
um, like head on chest type of thing. And I don't think that's a problem for you because you're going to love their chest. So. <laughs> but let's keep going anyway. Gosh, we got Capricorn again. Excuse me. A lot of Saturn energy here. So this person's love language is very much about showing you how much you mean to them and vice versa, whether that's through spontaneous trips or through more sentimental, practical gestures like What's that time? You know, we've been dating for this long. I think it's about time we go and um, do a trip out of town together or we, we buy each other jewelry or we get matching pajamas. Like, I don't know. They have this, this way of approaching relationships that seems to be traditional as well. And they want to honor that and you by going through milestones. So uh, that translates to me as someone who likes to do things a certain way. Like maybe they have like in their head an idea of what a relationship is and the different stages of it. And they want to honor that and honor you by moving through those stages as well. So it makes me think that if you've been with this person for X amount of years and they're happy to continue living with you and have a future with you, they're going to inevitably propose to you. Um, not because they maybe believe in marriage, but more so because they, they know that they're going to spend the rest of their life with you and they know that that may mean more to you than it does to them. Very Aquarius way of looking at it. So they'll marry you. They're like, yeah, well, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. If that means a lot to you, then yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you know, like it's very <laughs> logical, which is why um, Capricorns that are closer to Aquarius can can be as well. If they are like a Capricorn Aquarius cusp, like born in January, you can be like that as well. <laughs> we also have throat chakra here. So yes, I do think that they're very communicative. I think that one of their love languages is definitely words of affirmation or at least communication in general. Like I'm not, I don't really want to talk about like the five typical love languages. I want to describe how this person will shower affection onto you. And we've established that in public this person isn't someone who's comfortable with a lot of physical affection. So they are going to be someone that, this is making me think of somebody in particular, the way that they show you and others that you mean a lot to them is by talking about you in conversation, really discussing you, bringing you up, saying this is my partner, this is this is my partner, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, I'm really proud of them, actually. They've been doing this lately. And yeah, that's exactly what my partner does too. My partner does this. And yeah, wow, it's funny you bring that up. My partner just started doing that last weekend. Yeah, my partner went to that school as well. Like, that's how you know. That's how they show that they are interested and invested in you and in your relationship. They'll bring you up in conversation all the time. And that makes me think of one person in particular, which is so precious. I love it whenever he does that. It's like, oh... We know more about his partner from him than we do from her. <laughs> I barely know her, but I feel like I've known her her whole life because of him. <laughs> we also have heart chakra coming out. So yes, this person is very sentimental. They love those warm gestures. They, you know, they would appreciate something that's handmade and has a lot of thought and love into it rather than something that's just bougie and disconnected and not at all fitting the assignment. You know, if it's a anniversary gift, they would appreciate a gift of like I actually got you a rock and it's like what okay thank you no this rock is actually from the footpath that we sat on on our first date when we finished dinner and we had like time to kill we didn't want to finish seeing each other I went back to that same spot and picked this rock up and underneath it has our names and the date we met this person would just be like bro marry me <laughs> they would just melt for you they love that they love those kinds of things <laughs> Um, we also have the 11th house. So there is that Saturn Aquarius energy. 11th house, though, is more about surprises, um, originality. And in this card specifically, or in this little piece of my tissue box messages, I've also put futuristic. So well, I do think that that's a clear way of knowing that they care about you. They talk about you when they talk about their future. Well, that's really cool because I was thinking like we could do this or it'll be so cool in the future when we have our own house and our dogs and our kids. And you'd be like, wait, what? This person sees me in their future so that's a clear sign also I do think that this person may have like lone wolf tendencies um, if they're a true Aquarius, they'll have a solid group of friends around them that they've known for ages who just get them and put up with their crap. Um, but otherwise, they may be someone who struggles to like assimilate into conventional settings. So I do think that 
with you, it's going to be very much about like, I'll put myself in that uncomfortable situation if it means supporting you because I care about you. <laughs> I'll make sure that like I'm there with you, even though I hate it because I care about you. <laughs> or I'm going to surprise you with something that I don't enjoy doing because I care about you. <laughs> and that kind of translates equally with Virgo. When a Virgo person really cares about you, they put a lot of effort, time and planning into moments shared with you and they really go into detail showing you their little weird wild wonderful world as well so this person would like the, the two of you to have similar interests or for you to at least appreciate their interests um, I think that this person puts a lot of detail into what they like doing so they would in the very least just like to be able to continue doing that while also like having you interested in some aspects of it doesn't mean you have to love it like this isn't someone who's going to force you to like the things that they like but they are definitely going to appreciate it if you take interest in the things that they genuinely love doing. Um, we also have Saturn, so I knew it. A lot of Saturn, Capricorn, Aquarius energy. I could feel that from the beginning, absolutely. We also have same. So their love language is going to be honestly very similar to you. I do think that there are times when you're going to have to, you know, you're going to want to be very much all over each other and it's just like a little, 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 little ball of, of of this. Look at my hands. <laughs> and then there's also going to be times where it's like, Boop, okay, love you, love you too, all right. <laughs> We're here. And people are like, oh, okay. You're like, yeah, this is this is my partner. Nice, n introduce yourself, tell them about you. You're so special. Oh, okay, um, I'm so-and-so's partner, I do this. Isn't it? Aren't they amazing? You know, like, your version of affection isn't always touching, kissing, holding, publicly displaying that affection. It's going to be very much about talking about each other, um, being friendly with each other and sharing your couple, like each other with the people that you love as well through words. So that's what I'm seeing in terms of love language. <laughs> very interesting scenario. <laughs> Uh, let's keep going. We've got on, oh, we're down to how did the two of you bond? Wow, we've been flying through your reading. How do the two of you bond? This should be interesting because you're very, uh, you're a very interesting relationship in my mind. I'm very intrigued by you, to be honest. It reminds me of one particular relationship, um, but again, I can't typecast. So it's very, very interesting in general. All right, spirit. Group four. How does group four bond with their future spouse? How does group four bond with their future spouse? We have the two of wands reversed. I can't get that couple out of my head now. There must be a focal point in your reading for a reason. We also have the Ace of Pentacles reversed. How does group four bond with their future spouse? Oh, we have the two of cups. So you could bond through mates, to, through friends. Um, how do they bond with their future spouse? We have the hanged one coming out. One more card. How do they bond with their future spouse? <laughs> oh, my days. It's all over the ground. Excuse me. we got Aquarius on the ground again. The fool. I won't take it because there's so many cards on the ground. I'm going to have to shuffle them again. And... Um, try to aim for just one this time. Just one, please. <laughs> how does group four, I was about to say three, how does group four bond with their future spouse? Interesting. We have eight of ones coming out for you. Fire, fire, passion. Wow. Yeah, interests. You do have similar, similar interests. In fact, you both may like traveling or you may both want to go to similar places in terms of travel. And that's how you'll bond. You'll both want to do that. The experience will bring you closer together. Your bottom deck energy is the five of cups, upright, no less. So you bond through an experience. Oh, it could be several, to be honest with you. But there is one experience in particular in the beginning that will bring you closer because it does involve loss and overcoming a feeling of loss. So I can see with the Five of Cups that your person is very good at helping you through times where you feel emotionally kind of stuck and it feels like the situation is calling for you to move forward before you're ready. 
Your person is able to help you through that by encouraging you to take that moment as it comes. They don't force you to go through it quicker than you're ready to. And they are someone who feels very supportive emotionally of you. So there's a time in the beginning here where they help you bring sort of a more positive perspective into a very terrible time. And it feels like the way that they do would do that is like they would sit down and be like, hey, what's going on? Like, you look really upset. And you'd be like, yeah, my parents are separating and it's the worst day of my life. And they'll go, wow, that effing sucks. And you're just like... I know, right? Why is everybody telling me it's going to be okay? I'm feeling shit about myself. I just want to cry every day and punch something. And this person will be like, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go do it. Let's go punch something. <laughs> you know, they don't force you to feel anything that you're not feeling. They sit with you in that moment and they encourage you to get through it one step at a time in the best way that feels in the way that feels best for you. So it's very beautiful in that sense. Um, something out of an indie film, if I'm honest with you. We also have the two of wands here in the reverse position. So the two of wands tells me that the two of you will bond through some sort of change of plans. It's like one of you was expecting to do something and then that shot was taken from them. So they were kind of forced into a different direction instead. And you're bonding in that experience, again, by helping each other through it and by making the best out of that situation. I do think that this change of plans also encourages you to kind of focus on what you do have. And maybe this person was looking a lot higher and, and kind of missed the, what this relationship could be. So that change of plans caused them to focus more on what's in front of them and caused them to be able to see what this relationship really means to them, if that makes sense. Had they taken the high road, maybe they would have kept going and... and turned out to be a very unhappy person but the low road actually led to a lot of growth a lot of happiness and a lot of um, desire or at least passion that they wouldn't have found elsewhere it's a strange twist of fate here that the two of you experience and it's like immediately feels like a letdown but it brings the two of you together and in hindsight it's actually an opportunity not a, a loss we also have the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. So you both <laughs> seem to bond through <laughs> the things that you don't like, which is so interesting. It's like that feeling of an enemy and uh, and uh, like being frenemies, basically. Like, oh, um, we have nothing in common. Get away from me. <laughs> like, not that it's going to be that way. And then all of a sudden, it'll be someone will say, gosh, I hate oranges. Why do people love oranges? They're so sweet and they just have that pulpy flavor to them. Even if you take the pulp out, I can still taste it. And this person will turn around and go, me too. I've never met anybody else in my whole life that hates oranges as much as I do. Hi, my name's Jeff and I'm 26 years old. <laughs> and you'll just be like, wow. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to go get pineapple juice together? <laughs> There's a weird feeling here with the Ace of Pentacles, like it's some sort of irrational thing that you don't like that you share and it brings the two of you together. It's a situation of like, honestly, spirit saying when it comes to like um, technicalities, it's, it's a silly, it's a silly era of what you don't like, but it's something that you share and it helps the two of you bond and come closer together. So it feels so silly to explain. I hope that makes sense. That's just an example for you the orange juice thing. Um, the other thing with the Ace of Pentacles reversed is, again, that opportunity being taken and feeling like something isn't going according to plan. So you definitely, definitely bond through something like that. Like you were expecting it to go one way and it didn't. Now you're left this way and it's actually what you wanted. It's actually not exactly what you wanted, but it's exactly what you needed, if that makes sense, which is so bizarre to me. I can't expect Expect, I can't pretend to know what's going on in the universe's grand scheme, but it feels like one of those grand scheme moments where you think it's like a loss, but it's actually a win in the right direction. Two of Cups is beautiful. The Two of Cups tells me that the two of you are going to have a very strong friendship, which I'm not surprised about with all this Aquarius energy. You're going to have a very strong friendship. But you may actually bond through mutual acquaintances, through mutual friends. You may come together because of friends and friendship. I see that you'll come together because you and your person are able to see eye to eye. However, incredibly um, limited their scope of certain things seems to be. You're able to just accept that about each other. Like you, That's just who they are. They have strong opinions about certain things. Um, there's someone who 
um, challenges me and I like that. We work well together. They keep me humble. They tell me when something isn't going according to plan and, and how to re-strategize to make it more useful. And they just make me very, very, very happy. They're my little fire starter. They inspire me to keep going every day. That's what it feels like with you two. And I think that it's because you have this strong feeling of like, you know them, you understand them. And I think some people don't. Some people would look at your person and go, wow, they're rough around the edges. And you're like, yeah, but they're actually a big softie who hides behind big words and strong opinions. <laughs> so you know this person well, or you know them very, very well. I also think this person has a wicked sense of humor that you get and you love it. Also, <clears throat> with the hanged one reversed, I do think that this person is someone who... I don't know, you bond through each other's kind of mental health, if that makes sense. They understand what it's like to feel low. They understand what it's like to feel stuck, to feel helpless, to feel a little bit melancholy or unsure or just generally bleh. Can't even describe the feeling. I'm just like numb. I don't really know what I'm doing or where I'm going or if this is even the way, but I'm still here and I'm still walking this direction. This person can appreciate that and that's something that you bond over. They seem to understand that about you and I feel like they don't put pressure on you. Like they're able to just kind of deal like like this. Hey, you know, like wow, that effing sucks. Do you wanna go do you wanna go punch something? <laughs> Let's go let it out together. I can sit here while you cry. It doesn't make me uncomfortable, I promise. I <laughs> think that's what they would say. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. I also just think that you bond through a situation that you feel trapped in together. So <laughs> it almost feels like you wouldn't have come together any other way unless the universe kind of forced it to happen and you had to look at each other's very unique, complex sides and then you were like, wow, we actually fit really well together. This is nice. Had you looked at it that way, it would have clashed, 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 clashed. But the universe seems to bring you together in a way where you fit so well together. It's uncanny. Very interesting. Now, the Eight of Wands over here tells me that you do probably travel with this person or you just share similar interests to them, similar hobbies, similar passions. For example, you both might like cars, motorcycles, games, the same animals, the same sort of exercise things, the same outdoor experiences. You may like to watch the same kinds of movies. You may like the same animes. You may like the same cartoons. You may like the same action films. You may like the same Justice League heroes. Like, who knows? It's very much about having like a kindred interest here with the eight of wands and I do think that you're healthily attracted to each other as well when it comes to the physical side so I do want to know now does this person connect with you in their dreams currently group four please spirit does group four's person does their future spouse connect with them in their dreams does their future spouse connect with them in their dreams? We have the death of the deceitful, number 76. Very interesting imagery. I really like this card. Does group four's future spouse connect with them in their dreams? We have 71, body as a house. Does their future spouse connect with them in their dreams? We have fear that the light will bring judgment. Yeah, I'm getting a very specific message here. And of course, it had to be your group. <laughs> we have the lonely journey of the priestess. Yeah, okay. So no, because your person is a skeptic, group four. Your person is mad skeptical. They don't necessarily believe in these concepts. They don't necessarily believe that you can connect in that way. They do believe in unexplainable events. Um, they do believe in certain conspiracy theories, um, but they have a skeptical mind. And unless they experience it themselves, they're a bit hard around the edges when it comes to being open to these spiritual beliefs. So they don't actively seek out you in their dreams, but there is this feeling as though like they can't deny the connection that the two of you share. They can't deny the fact that they do feel very strongly connected to you and there's a familiarity about you that is likened to a feeling they've experienced in their dreams. <laughs> Listen to me explaining this. We also have the one who hides the sun. Yeah, they're kind of like in denial. They're hiding the fact that 
they um, believe in these things because I don't think they do. I don't think they're open to it until like they experience it themselves, which is not your responsibility to do. You're not here to awaken people. That's something that happens when they're ready. But I do think that your presence in their life makes them more open to certain concepts and themes. We also have cosmic exploration. Yeah, they are very curious. They're skeptical. They're not agnostic, right? So it's like... Um, ignorant until proven, you know, <laughs> open. So they're very curious about what's out there. They're very curious about certain um, themes and concepts when it comes to spirituality, but they're not someone who's open to it at this point. And I do think that it's not that they don't mean to dream of you. It's just that they live very logically. <laughs> so um, it's something that you awaken them to. And I don't think it's your responsibility to do that, but your presence does instigate um, bigger feelings from them that makes them want to think like, okay, well, what else is out there what else the why does this person feel so familiar i did have a dream about you last night and now you're doing it in front of me and it's really weirding me out like what the heck so that's what it kind of feels like their group four i hope this was helpful and interesting for you it's been a lot of, it's been an interesting pleasure for me to be honest with you a lot of fun your reading was very very different to the other three groups i am going to go into the extended now group four the extended reading will be an 18 plus reading and the main reason that I have done the 18 plus reading in the extended is because YouTube is very specific about what I can and can't say on here. I do plan on doing 18 plus readings here, but I need to do it in a way where I'm not censored. So I'm just trying to like, yeah, it's going to, it's going to have to be something that I really plan and think about and I'm very conscious of. So, well, our extended reading on um, Ribbon is going to be a lot more explicit in terms of I'll be able to use language that is comfortable for me. I won't feel like I'm censoring myself. And the main topics we'll be talking about is what does your future spouse like about you and your body specifically? Um, what is the chemistry like between the two of you? What is your first time with them going to be like? And what attracted them to you in the first place? So if you are interested in that extended reading, the link will be down below um, for each of the individual groups, or you could purchase the collection. It's up to you. Thank you so much for all of your support, though, right here on YouTube. I really appreciate you tuning in, connecting, exchanging energy with me. You being here is so much support in itself. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Speaking of thank you, I do need to thank your guides, my guides, and our spiritual teams for keeping me safe and for helping me channeling these channel help helping me channel these messages. <laughs> I'll see you in another video group four. It has been a pleasure. Look after yourself and bye!